pass. Oh, it's landed in. Bristol Hats. It's landed in Rich Lee's Hello and welcome to Bears TV and our coverage of this mouth-watering clash between the Bristol Bears and the Crusaders here at Ashton Gate Stadium in Bristol. Well, our visitors have travelled halfway around the globe to be here tonight with nearly 20,000 fans packing the gate for this encounter between North and South. And many more of you joining us from around the world online to watch us here. Well, you've seen the players there arriving here to stadium as they walk the tunnel and a little bit earlier. That was them arriving here a little bit earlier and in studio. Well, we have got a foot in both camps to join me here as we count down to kick off just under half an hour away. And I'm pleased to say that we have forwards crusader Tom Christie here with us and uh, Bears fly half. We've got Callum Sheedy as well. So I will start with our guest first. Tom, uh, welcome to the studio. Uh, great to have you here. How, how has the pre-season tour been so far? Oh, it's been exciting. Um, it's, not, it's a unique experience for us to get to come over to this side of the world and play some different teams, but it's been a lot of fun. The boys are loving it. Um, the weather's slightly different. We've left it summer, but I mean, it's been, it's been amazing. Yeah, you've had a lot of wet weather over the last <laughs> few days. To be fair, you're being very polite about our weather, I suspect. Uh, it's the first time that the Crusaders have done a tour like this, isn't it? What, what was the catalyst? I'm not sure whether it was promoters or just an opportunity to play other teams, but from a player's perspective, like we need more of it. Like it's something that we love, um, and the more that we can get it, the more exposure we can get to teams that we're not used to playing would just be amazing. So it's a great thing for rugby, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great for us to be able to see some <laughs> Southern Hemisphere rugby come up to us. And in terms of the month, you've played Munster already. What was that experience like? I know it was a, a narrow loss, I think, at the very end, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, it was like, their fans that were amazing, like, even when they're not supporting you, it was very uplifting to hear them sing, to hear them chant, um, and, but on the game itself, it was physical, it was tough, we knew that the, that, like, we knew that's the way that they played rugby, but it was great to then experience it, and, yeah, just f feel something different almost, and, get the challenge yeah well there's another challenge ahead tonight I know you're not taking part you've brought a big touring squad haven't you just under 40 players I think. yeah so it's a like different that. rotation tonight I think and 11 changes or something from the Munster side but we'll talk more about the team lineups in a moment uh, keeping you company alongside we've got Callum here veteran of the Bears I am like it doesn't feel right for a veteran <laughs> at your young age but uh, 10 years it's been isn't it 10 years yeah it's been yeah a long time um, I guess it goes really fast it was only sort of when I was uh, announcing the leaving stuff uh, two weeks ago that I realised how long it had actually been and yeah um, 10 brilliant years and, and hopefully end on a high this year. Yeah well we will talk a little bit more about that announcing of uh, change and departing us uh, I haven't forgiven you yet. Um, <laughs> just a word you're not featuring tonight obviously because of injury I think it was in the Exeter game on yeah. December 29th wasn't it? Yeah Christmas yes, game. Yes yeah so um, Tommy MCL um, just for half time in the Exeter game so um, yeah really frustrating um, frustrating timing uh, Injuries always come at the worst time, don't they? So as soon as you're playing a run of games, you're getting knocked back. But, um, yeah, working hard on recovery and hopefully a couple of weeks away. Yeah, I never found injuries ever came at a good time. But we will talk more about your rehab as we go. So, unfortunately, you two not in action. But let's find out who is and if there's been any uh, changes to the team lineups. We'll hand over to our lead commentator for us this evening, in the dulcet tones of Toby Osborne. Thank you very much, uh, Lisa. Yes, Ashton Gate, the noise levels are building very nicely. So let's look at the two teams, starting with our visitors tonight, Crusaders. Well, Willie Hines will lead the team out at Ashton Gate Stadium, where more than 20,000 spectators will wait for what is set to be a spectacle. Kershaw, Sykes, Martin and Seb Calder join George Bell in the front row with Quinton Strange vice-captaining tonight, Jamie Hanna, Dominic Gardner, Corey Kello, and Christian Leo Willey rounding off that forward pack. Willie Hines starts at halfback, a familiar name there, of course, with Kiana donning the 10 jersey. Maka Springer takes the left wing, and Mata Ailey takes the right. Ryan Crotty, a very familiar face, and Johnny Rova occupy the centre, mixing fresh talent with a seasoned pro. Che Fiaki provide structure at fullback as well. And then a further 10 players are set to make an impact off the bench, including the likes of Moananu and George Boa, Noah Hotham and Taka Kamara. So no short of depth 
tonight for the Crusaders. As for the Bristol Bears, well, the headline news sees Siva Naulago make his first start of the new season. The powerhouse wing who made his first appearance of the season off the bench against Bath last time out is the only backline change from that emphatic derby victory. Over 100 points in total in that game. Pat Lamb, along with Rob Penny, of course, names that 26-man matchday squad for this blockbuster game. It features 20-year-old academy duo Sam Worsley and Paddy Pierce among the replacements, who, of course, had a brief spell down under with the Crusaders. Sam Graham Slaw starts at Loosehead alongside Fred Davies and Carl Sinclair in front row, while Stephen Luatua is named in the second row alongside Joe Batley. 22-year-old Joe Owen is on the blind side flank, joining skipper Fitz Harding and number eight Magnus Bradbury in the back row. And a star-studded bench tonight for the Bears. Right, let's hear from the man in charge. It's director of rugby, Pat Lamb. Pat, what an occasion. How much excitement is there in camp? Yeah, it's huge excitement. I mean, uh, you know, this is, uh, this, this is the type of games that the boys want to play in, you know, against an uh, unbelievable club, successful club. And, um, but I think the big one is that the attitude of playing the game. You know, both teams uh, want to go out there and play. And, I mean, it's a little bit of wet today, but, you know, maybe dry, but this is with test skills, and, and that's what it is. Skills under pressure, good attacking mindset, great game. I mean, we know how good the Crusaders are. Fantastic track record. What are you expecting from your boys today? Yeah, I think a continuation of what, what happened at the Bath game and um, in the way that our mindset about how we want to play the game going forward. Um, back to our roots, so to say. And, um, and, and that's all about what's on. And, and back your core, back yourselves. Doesn't matter where we are, if it's on to run, if it's on to kick, if it's on to, you know, go direct or around the corner or over, just, just go for it and back each other. And, you know, don't be afraid to make mistakes. And, and if we do, just transition, get, in, get the ball back, lose the ball, get it back. Like you said, last time we were here, an incredible derby, fantastic atmosphere and something special again for the fans tonight, we hope. I think that's the, 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 probably the outcome of it, of, of what we're trying to achieve. It's for the fans. I mean, you know, they came to Exeter and they weren't impressed by the, uh, the kick fest. But, and, and that's, you know, for us, we, we have a, a responsibility. Me and Rob spoke about it earlier this week about how we want to play. Caught up with good friends, uh, Zinzan Brook and, uh, from the Blues and, uh, and then Justin Marshall, you know, uh, old teammates. And we were just talking about the game and about they were blown away by the facility. He said it's unbelievable here. And then they just talked about the type of where rugby is and, and playing. And they were talking about the moves and how we used to really have a go. And I said, well, we should see that today. And so, uh, you know, that's the plan. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Pat Lamb there with uh, Downsy, reminiscing the good old days. We'll hear a little bit more about that as he sits down with uh, uh, Rob Penny. Uh, we'll hear from him at half time as well. So, Callum, uh, Pat talking through uh, what they're expecting. I mean, a strong statement of intent then. We're in for hopefully a big one tonight. Yeah, I, you know, like Pat said there, it's, um, it's a game we want to win. But it's also, you know, I think as, as fans and as rugby fans coming to watch the game tonight, I think both teams will throw the ball about. I think there'll be plenty of tries and, um, you know, building momentum is massive in the Premiership and obviously we come off the back of a big Bath win and it's, um, it's a game we want to win. Um, but I think there'll be a lot of, a lot of running rugby. Uh, and uh, just to mention on Siva, him starting, I mean, it's been such a long time to see him running out and starting. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, you know, he's, he's had a really tough road to recovery, but seeing him out there, you know, we've seen behind the scenes all the hard work he's put in. I uh, really look forward to seeing him go tonight. Indeed we are. Well, we've heard from the Bristol side of things. Let's hear from the Crusaders assistant coach, James Marshall. James, welcome to Bristol. How much are your boys looking forward to this tonight? Mate, there's a real energy in the group. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of young guys who are extremely excited, putting on the Crusader jer jersey for the first time. So um, there's a lot of, I think there's a bit of real nervous energy, but um, I'm sure as soon as they get out there and see the crowd, they'll, they'll be loving the moment. You managed to see any of Bristol yet? What do you think of the facilities here? Oh, mate, we went to um, the Bristol Bears training facility um, throughout the week, and man, what an incredible um, facility they've got there! It's um, the perfect facility for rugby. I'm very jealous going through there, looking at that. But and even the stadium here, it's um, pretty special. So really excited to see what happens out there tonight. How important are these pre-season games for you? Oh, massive! Um, gives us an opportunity to see see where the boys are at and. 
Um, just to experience different styles of rugby has been a real um, plus for us coming over here. Obviously Munster last week, um, unbelievable atmosphere. We got basically everything out of that game that we wanted and um, hopefully we see um, a few improvements from the game last week out there tonight. And what are you expecting from Bristol Bears? Well, I love watching the Bristol Bears. I've loved watching them in the um, preview and just the way they attack. They've got a real um, entertaining mindset. Um, they look to play from anywhere and um, I love it when you come against teams like that because we're, we're pretty similar. We like to play with the spaces. So um, hopefully we see an entertaining game and um, yeah, should be. And finally, any message for the fans watching at home straight down the camera, what would you like to say to them tonight? Uh, thanks for the support and looking forward to the, to the year ahead. I'm sure they've paid the $6 to, <laughs> to watch us on TV back home in New Zealand. So um, appreciate your support. I love Tom Marshall doing our job for us, uh, promoting the game. I hope they are watching. They're watching a free stream potentially at the moment. So let's hope we'll hook them in with uh, purchasing that $6 uh, uh, stream for tonight's game once it begins. So uh, talking through that, I mean, you've talked, he was touching on there the different styles. How is it different? Well, I think it's very different. Like in New Zealand, we like to throw the ball around. We like to um, kind of attack from anywhere. Not that that's diff any different over here, but you guys are very structured. Your forwards like to get into the game, like to be very physical. Um, so, and potentially a wee bit more kicking as well. So we've got to adapt to those changes. But I guess as the Bristol guys said, they want to play. So if they want to play, we want to play. It's going to be exciting. Yeah, well, I, I would say the Bears do tend to throw the ball <laughs> sometimes, isn't it? much to my nails testimony. Um, looking at a few of the players focusing in there, then we've just seen the team, uh, I think it was Willie Hines there. I mean, obviously he's not any stranger to Premiership Rugby, but uh, what were we expecting to see? Oh, he's been a great leader this week. And with the younger group on the touring squad, the way he's led and the way he's kind of shared his wisdom around what to expect. Um, and even playing at Ashton Gate before, he said, that, that, that can be a challenge in itself sometimes with the fans they have here in the style of rugby Bristol like to play. So he's shared that wisdom and it's been a great voice for our team and I'm sure they'll reflect in his performance as well. Yeah, well, let's hope it is. Uh, let's hope that all the crowd has a great lot of times to uh, roar into action this evening as well. We've, uh, we've heard from the players and now let's find out a little bit more about the team itself. Well, uh, our visitors have travelled across the world to be with us this evening and we welcome them to BS3. But just who are they? Well, why don't we let them answer that question? Kia ora. Good evening Bristol Bears fans and good morning to all the Crusaders fans around the world. The boys from the South Island of New Zealand are in town and ready to bring that all black flair to Ashton Gate. So, who are we? Allow me to explain. 12 time Super Rugby Champions, the most successful rugby team in the most successful rugby nation. It basically means we're top of the tree when it comes to this sport. We own the north side of the South Island. We've had some pretty big names wear the red and black over the years. Dan Carter, Richie McCaw, Kieran Reid, Sam Whitelock and Justin Marshall are just five of a long list of rugby legends to pull on the famous colours. Our story has many chapters, including the most tragic in 2011. That year, our the city of Christchurch was devastated by an earthquake which took 182 lives. Our home stadium of Lancaster Park was destroyed and Crusaders were left homeless. Since 2012, however, the Apollo Project Stadium has been home. Crusaders picked right up where they left off, winning their eighth Super Rugby title in 2017. These days, as part of the new Super Rugby Pacific, we haven't lost a championship yet. Beating teams from Australia, Fiji and the Pacific Islands, we're here in Bristol for a tune-up ahead of another season in search of a league title. So brace yourselves for 80 minutes of rugby Crusader style. Bold, brash, in your face. Who are we? Bristol, you are about to find out. Cannot wait. We are duly braced. And a big thanks uh, to Hale Speedy, I haven't made that name up, from More FM down in New Zealand for telling us all about the Crusaders. Right, let's head down to pitch side now and hear from some of the stars of tonight's game. Downsy is pitch side for us. Who have you got? Thanks, Lisa. The excitement is building down here. And, well, look who I've managed to be shorter than again, uh, Joe Batley. Joe, well, this is exciting, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, what an opportunity for us. Um, play against people we don't normally play against, different competition, different ethos. And 
I mean, an extremely uh, successful team from New Zealand. So, yeah, really exciting for us as a team and I'm excited as an individual, as a rugby fan. And as far as the training regime, has that changed at all this week because of the competition? Uh, no, I mean, like, ultimately we want to come here and do a good performance and get the win. So, um, to get there, it's about consistency of our training week. So, obviously, there's a different... Um, like stimulus this week like we know they want to play fast uh, how how crusaders look to play and how we're going to counter that compared to potentially the the way they play in super rugby compared to the premiership but i mean we're looking forward to the challenge as a forward pack um they've led the way with more attack more d so we know there's a challenge there but like what an opportunity for us to put a marker down for ourselves and tell us about the socks you've got some special socks yeah so um, i'm an ambassador for uh, rugby against cancer so it's a, it's a charity um originally in Portsmouth and they look to help out smaller um, funds or um, or bigger charities and they do um, expedition matches or big walks big things and yeah it's grown since 2017 I think it, um, 2017 sorry um, so yeah I'm going to wear them in the warm-up and uh, hopefully spread a bit of awareness so we'll go. give us a look give us a look show them to the camera Pretty in pink, you know, it makes sense. <laughs> Good stuff, Joe. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank Great you. stuff. Joe Batley there. Well, all warming up down here. Lisa, back to you in the studio. Thanks very much, Downsy. Yeah, I mean, Cal, he's, he's been, it's been such a pleasure to see him thrive this season, isn't it? Particularly after what he's gone through. I mean, he, he talked a little bit there about wearing the special socks for the cancer charity. I mean, what he's overcome, and for our New Zealand visitors, probably not aware of the battle that he's undergone over the last few years. Yeah, I mean, to to come back from, from what he did four years ago in, in terms of battling his cancer and beating his cancer is special enough, but then to, to perform the way he has um, on and off the field this year is, is a testament to who he is as a person, who he is as a player, I think. Um, a lot of people just be satisfied with beating that, which is an enormous achievement in itself. But then to go on and, and strive for, for the best in terms of his rugby career as well is you know, it's really special. So um, I'm really chuffed to see him doing so well this year and, and he, he really wants to push on. So um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing him go again tonight. Yeah. Watching him, I mean, I was watching the Bath game in the derby. I mean, he scored a fantastic, it was great to see him score that try. You know, it's always nice one to get one over the local rivals. But he's just become so vocal. You know, when he left us originally, he, he wasn't quite the character. He's really developed into that playing role, you know, almost a captaincy role. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like you said, when he, when he sort of left for those couple of seasons, um, when he came back, it was like he was like a new man. And you see the way he interacts with the crowd. Now we do give him a lot of stick for it, by the way. Um, he gets awfully <laughs> excited when we have penalties. But, um, Listen, it's, it's great and you know, he really shows off his personality and he, he has become a leader in the group, um, especially in that forward pack, so uh, it's awesome. Yeah, well, we shall uh, wait and see how it goes tonight. Well, let's uh, head back down to pitch side because Downsy has found a crusader. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. Here we are, pitch side, and I'm joined by Noah. Noah, what an incredible match this is going to be. How excited are you boys for it? Yeah, so excited. Um, amazing opportunity for us to come up here to England. Uh, amazing venue. Never been under this many lights, I don't think. So, yeah, exciting. Excited to visit Bristol. Have you managed to see much of Bristol? I know you've been up at the, the HPC. Yeah, yeah, got around town a little bit on our days off. You know, go see. I uh, went for a visit to Bath. That was lovely around town. All the art around town's amazing too. So, yeah, beautiful city. For you, pulling on a Crusaders jersey must be fantastic. Doing it in a different country, in another hemisphere, a proud moment for you. Yeah, to represent our club and, I guess, New Zealand and the Southern Hemisphere, come up here and verse a uh, notoriously good Bristol side yeah, is very exciting for us and exciting to see what happens tonight. And what have you heard about the Bears? What are you expecting game-wise tonight? Uh, we heard this, they call they call this a playground or something or other, so um, expecting them to play a lot, so should be a real exciting brand of footy. Um, hope, hopefully we can combat that. Good luck tonight. Cheers. Thank you very much. No hope and then with uh, Downsy. So, what's he like? I mean, he's a youngster, and what a brilliant opportunity to have this kind of tour. Oh, he's a personality. He, the way. Yeah, he I didn't think, seem shy. No, <laughs> you'll, you'll see it on the field, um, but it's backed up off the field. Like, he's a great young lad. Um, his personality is always in the room. He lifts up the people around him. Um, but, yeah, when he gets out on that field, he will make an impact, and I can almost guarantee that. He's been. It's his second year in the team now. I think he's feeling a lot more comfortable, but. Uh, he's one of those guys that just cuts us up at training and uh, he's a tough man to defend so I'm glad he's on my team rather than on the other one. <laughs> yeah well we've just seen the New Zealanders, uh, the Crusaders have gone in, the Bears are just heading into the tunnel. What's it like for your team in terms of size of crowd? I know Munster was about 40,000, we're just under 20,000. Do you think you've got a lot of young players in the team as well? Obviously it's all about experience. Do you think any of them will be put off or they'll just embrace it? and and? You were saying to me ahead of uh, us starting that how much you've enjoyed how the fans are over here. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. Like when when the fans are singing, when they're chanting, 
even if it's not for you, it lifts you up. Like mm. that, I think I was out on the field last week smiling because it's just such a such a cool environment to play in. And we've talked about it as as players of what to expect. But to get that early in your career and to experience it early is it sets you up. Yeah. And then there's no kind of environment that's daunting. Yep. And for the guys that didn't play last week, they would have seen it. So they're not out of the loop completely, which is great. Mm. All right, well, going from uh, young to old, I'm going to reference that again, Callum. Uh, let's have a chat through. So the last time we were talking was, it was, well, it was less than a couple of weeks ago when you announced that you were moving back to Cardiff, your, your hometown. Um, after 10 years with us, there's been a lot of fond memories. Have you got one that you can pick out that's been the best so far? Is it to come still this season? Hopefully to come, but um, <laughs> so far I'd say uh, probably the Doncaster game. Funny you should Eight mention that. Ago. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, look how young he looks. Yeah, oh, look. That's me sounding very maternal. Yeah. Oh, look how long. Well, that was a, that was a very you were the hero. I think you were called the savior of Bristol Bears at that one. It got us the promotion for those that don't know. Self-proclaimed, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the best ones are self-promote. Yeah, that got us promotion to the Premiership. So it was uh, after too much of an absence. Then we've got another little one to embarrass you with. Uh, I think oh, we're still singing it one more time. It was so good. We saw it so many times. You're, you're fixated by that. Um, I think one of my favourites, Challenge Cup final. Yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, one of the again one of the best nights of my career. Um, we kind of went out there and everyone everyone rolled us off against the Star Studded Toulon side. Um, and yeah, just one of those nights where everything's run right for us and um, really special. And to get the first bit of silverware, major silverware for the yeah. club. Um, in 40 years, I think. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah amazing night. It was just a shame it was in COVID time, so we could only have I think it was like a thousand or five thousand out there. I bet there's loads of Bristolians who'd love to go out there. Yeah, we were all cheering at screens yes, remotely at yeah. a safe distance at that point in <laughs> no time. Um, so that was the, the European one. But of course, uh, then there was Exeter, which is always nice to get a, um, a win over local rivals. They're not far from us. They're about an hour, uh, about an hour down the uh, M5 from here. And this was another one of your highlights for us that we've clipped up. Yeah, this was last year. This was, a, again, a, another great game for us. Um, to beat Exeter, like you said, is no mean feat. So. You probably have to dig very deep in the archives to get a try for myself there. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, great, another great night at Ashton Gate, really special. Um, another one I, I really enjoyed. Um, I will miss the nights at Ashton Gate, especially with the sell-up crowd. So, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Well, we'll, we'll handle that. Nice little run over. Nice to end on a try, isn't it? I think there was one more from Liam, but we're running out of time, I think. From We will talk through more <laughs> at half time. But as I've duly embarrassed you enough, I'll spare your blushes now, your uh, finest moments, but still yet to come. Hopefully, plenty more. Uh, final thoughts going into the game. Um, obviously, we'll hear the hacker soon as well. We did hear them practicing. Yeah, no, it's going to be exciting. The <coughs> boys did a run through yesterday, and it's probably the first time I've actually watched our hacker as a spectator, and it does it blows you away. So it'll be strong. Hopefully the crowd kind of gets them excited for the game as well. Yeah, yeah, it did put off the meeting that I was in yesterday when they were practicing. It's always a sight to see a hacker. <laughs> so, uh, uh, right, well, we will, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are streaming this to uh, our social channels. So uh, it is time for us to say goodbye to those of you that are watching on Facebook and YouTube. You can, of course, purchase the match day pass bargain price of just £3 or just over $6 if you're in New Zealand. Uh, simply go to live.bristolbearsrugby.com. Dot com. That's live.bristolbearsrugby.com. And there you can see the crowd uh, all waiting with bated breath just over five minutes or so until we are ready to get this game kicking off. And I will hand you over to our commentary team. Uh, we introduced Toby Osborne a little bit earlier, but he is joined this evening uh, with best hooker Will Capon. So now I will hand you over to Will Capon and Toby Os Osborne. Well, thank you very much, uh, Lisa. In the words of Rob Penny, the time has come for some razzle-dazzle. The Crusaders are in town, ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Bristol Bears side famed for producing some fireworks themselves. Can the Crusaders get this pre-season tour back on track tonight in Bristol? If we know one thing about the Crusaders looking to bounce back, the hits will land harder and the fight will become even fiercer. As Ashton Gate teeming with rain now, under the Ashton Gate lights, full silent. Beautifully lit up as well on this Friday night. 
a beautiful occasion in BS3, tucked away in the southwest of England, and what a night of rugby we have in store. And how appropriate as well that we welcome you watching Down Under back in New Zealand and those of you that are watching in the USA today to a very wet and windy Ashton Gate Stadium. The glare of the floodlights only heightening tonight's atmosphere. Old friends reunite in Rob Penny and Pat Lamb. A friendly feel to this encounter all week, but as soon as that whistle blows, there'll be no love lost between the Bears and the Crusaders. Expect some fireworks. Another historic night in this rugby frenzied city as we welcome the 12 time Super Rugby Champions for this exhibition match. Willie Hines and Fitz Harding ready to lead the two sides out onto the Ashton Gate surface. And what a night we are in store for. The Bristol Bears and the Crusaders under the lights at Ashton Gate Stadium. And what an occasion we have for you. And Will, if I can bring you in at this point, what an atmosphere. And nights like Ashton Gate produces are quite special, aren't they? Oh, no doubt, Toby. Thank you for introducing me there. No, the fireworks starting now, preceding what I'm expecting are going to be fireworks on the pitch. Two teams, both very attacking styles of rugby. A touring side excited to come and show what they're about after a loss last week. And what a way to start us off now than with this hacker. Absolutely, a swell of noise at Ashton Gate Stadium. The Crusaders are in town and we're about to witness something truly special. The Bears following this will be determined to put on a show. It's not often we get to witness something like this. Takawa there from the Crusaders. There'll be some experienced players in the Bristol squad that have seen a hacker before, but that will be a first for many. Let's look at the two teams just quickly then ahead of this massive encounter. Starting with the Crusaders, Willie Hines will lead the team out at Ashton Gate tonight. Kershaw Sykes Martin and Seb Calder join George Bell in the front row. Quinton Strange is vice captain tonight in a very explosive pack. As I said, Hines at half back with Rihanna in the 10 jersey. Maka Springer takes the left wing and Mata Ailey takes the right. As for the Bears, the headline news is Siva now Largo makes his first start of the new season. That powerhouse wing made his first appearance off the bench against Bath last time out. A 26-man squad for both sides today. This is set to be a belter. Well, it'll be the trusty boot of AJ McGinty to get us underway at Ashton Gate, just as the smoke from the fireworks and the flamethrowers start to clear. The Bears will kick and play from left to right as we see it towards the south stand at Ashton Gate Stadium. And there's a spill already and Kyle Sinclair will 
fiercely barrel into contact straight away and just about nudges over the 22 metre line. We were promised some ferocious rugby from both sides tonight. The two head coaches, Pat Land, the director of rugby for the Bears, and Rob Penny were interviewed earlier on this week and they said they're expecting a really explosive fixture as Van Rensburg gets his first touch of the game. And the Bears building nicely in the midfield. Pushed back, though, by the Crusaders. Quick ball from Harry Randall, which Carl Sinclair will now protect. Just as Ashton Gates quietens for a moment, people catching their breath after the hacker. Really something unique for these rugby mad fans in the southwest of England to experience as the Crusaders now capitalise on some loose ball. And Willie Hines, who's a familiar face, back playing his rugby on English soil today. And that's a good take by Richie Lane. And that will, I'm sure, just calm his nerves slightly. An interesting kick across field there, looking for Noah Heward, and it will be a line-out inside the Bears' half in favour of the Crusaders. An interesting start there. Both sides looking like the ball is really slippery with what you haven't seen is the rain that's been hammering down all day. I think these two sides that are playing very attacking rugby are going to have to work hard to retain ball on their attacking sets, and what a great line-out start for the Crusaders here. That will settle it. 20-year-old George Bell's nerves. He became the youngest player on the side's roster last season for the Crusaders. And under-20s international with the All Blacks as well as the ball is spilled forward. A knock-on and it will be Bears' ball just outside of their own 22. And Will, an, an early scrum here in this game and uh, a position you know very well as hooker. Fred Davies lines up tonight in an injury-riddled front row and forward pack for the Bears at the moment but a big night for him. Oh certainly and uh, Fred is an incredibly competent player he's come up through the university system at Durham uh, was Buck Super Rugby Player of the Year in his final season I believe is the record try scorer in the in the competition and, you know and as a member of the squad he's incredibly popular he's incredibly hard working I think we've all been delighted to see him get this opportunity off of the back of his really good performance at Bath uh, last week last Saturday. I'm sure that front row will be uh, relieved not to be facing up against Owen Franks, who's not involved. Carl Sinclair actually faced the Crusaders in a touring match in his second game in an England jersey when he first started out on the international scene as it spilled again and the Crusaders looked to capitalise here and I think a case early on of both sides trying to settle into the conditions. Exactly. I think it's going to take some time for the teams to adapt. Uh, I think taking a yard off of that depth both teams trying to play very flat at the line trying to get to the outside of these quite high pressing defenses I think quickly we'll come to realize that giving yourself that extra extra yard of depth will give you the time to get to the outside of these presses and here is the man we've been talking about 11 appearances so far for Fred Davies and he'll be delighted with the way that line out has gone there as it's taken on by the Bears still inside their own half as Harry Randall tries to wriggle through and it's a lovely offload and the Bears could be away hit. Hewitt is the man racing through and it spilled just as he was looking for options around him and then scooped back up at 15 by Fiaki. This game opening up now as Richie Lane burst forward but he stopped in his tracks by the man who booted the ball forward in the first place Fiaki the 23 year old. A beast of a fullback at 100 kilos as the Bears come forward again. Bang on the 10 metre line. Good quick ball from Harry Randall as McGinty tries a bit of creativity, but it doesn't get beyond the big hands of Dominic Gardner. Who races forward again. Crunching challenge by Fitz Harding. Bit of space for the Bears out on that left hand side in front of the Dolman stand at Ashton Gate. Cries of Bristol now ringing around all four stands of the stadium. Lovely hands in the midfield as Van Rensburg comes forward. Another chance for Noah Hewitt. He steps inside. Bears drawing ever closer to the whitewash. But the Crusaders stand strong. 12-time Super Rugby champions. The most successful side in the competition's history. 
boosting some of the game's biggest names. But it's the Bears at the moment that are looking the more likely to put early points on the board as Randall takes us away from that left-hand side. Here he is again, featured briefly for England under Eddie Jones. I'll try to pick up a bit more form to get back into the England reckoning. For something very unique as McGinty spreads it wide, looking for Hewitt again. Just about stays in touch, lovely hands from him. And he's just spilled at the vital moment by now Largo. Bit of rustiness from him. I think Bristol can take a lot from that set of play. Building the phases really nicely. As we said, with these conditions, both teams are going to have to adapt really quickly. And just being able to retain possession like that, just through multiple phases, building the pressure, and you saw that the holes were starting to open up. The ball of unfortunately slipping out of Siva's hands on this occasion, but that's the sort of play that's going to get Bristol the win today. What a scintillating break by Noah as well. Starting this game off really well, finding that open space. Using the attacking kick as well, moving that contest. Really good play from the, from the winger. Well, rugby is a, a family affair for Noah Hewitt. His grandfather, Roger Hill, played for Bishopston RFC, as well as refereeing at the equivalent to championship level. And his great uncle as well played fullback for Bristol rugby as Willie Hines waits for the call from the referee. I'm happy with something which the referee hadn't twigged. I think he got a word maybe from the linesman there. And the Crusaders will have the penalty. But Willie Hines is a, a player that sort of drifted back off the international scene, turns 38 years of age in November. He joined uh, Gloucester from the Crusaders back in 2015. And not only did Eddie Jones pick him for internationals, but he was then named as the Gloucester captain as well. Steady pair of hands at nine. Bell with the throw, another successful line out from him as Corey Kello looks to charge through a few Bears defenders. Neither side yet to really find their rhythm in this one as Hines will look to box kick away from his 22. Another good collection, it was uh, Williams that time. Lost forward by Randall. The Crusaders will gather. They've got men over on that right-hand side. Can they capitalise? Maybe not the pace they need it, as it's taken on once more by the 21-year-old lock, Jamie Hanna. Passing the torch from the colossal Sam Whitelock is the new generation. And that second row for the Crusaders, and hopefully the All Blacks as well. Lost forward and the Bears now will look to break. And it's a game so far littered with unforced errors. And Matt Ailey will take his time over that one. Matt Ailey jokingly saying he doesn't want to be involved in the same sort of bracket as the returning Crusaders like Crotty and Frank spent the last two years. He's just 27 years old with the Western Force. He said he'd never thought he'd represent the team. He played 32 games and scored 17 tries for. But here come the Bears. He's got defending to do now as the players switch to McGinty. Tries to grub her through, gets a second bite of the cherry. It's well gathered, though, by Rihanna. Hines waits for a clear opportunity to kick once more. Bang on the 22 line inside the Crusaders' half. Difficult ball to gather out of the sky. It's not collected cleanly, but it breaks for the Bears. And again, McGinty was the man there looking to latch on the end of Heward's pass inside. 
Hines has to go quicker this time. Delicate hands. By Sykes Martin, and it's launched upfield. Fortunately, for Richie Lane, he wasn't inside his 22 and launches for the corner. And a good collection. Marcus Springer has forced an error, which Lua Tua capitalises on, and there's a chance now inside the Crusaders 22 for the Bears. Quick thinking from Sinclair. Fitzharding initially was the man to take it on. Now the Bears find themselves back inside the Crusaders 22 as Randall gathers himself. Chance out on that far side for now Largo. We come back though for an earlier penalty. A lot of the opportunities early doors, Toby, just coming from these, these attacking kicks from Bristol. You can just see with these conditions, creating contestable situations while sometimes creating risk. Also afford you the opportunity to find broken field where otherwise it'll be really hard to do with through sick handling. So expect to see a lot more of that coming through with the likes of AJ putting those little stabs through, balls going up high in the air and that and that loose ball creating the opportunities for the for the line breaks. And as you see now, pressure being rewarded with a line out five metres out from the line. A sign of intent from the Bears, and it's well collected, and now they'll look to drive in this exhibition match against the Crusaders, but for the Bears, it's an error that means that the away side have a moment of reprieve. Oh, that's unfortunate as well. Just being penalised there for blocking in the lifter, lifter coming round the back of the jumper, creating that obstruction before the mall's even been formed. So you'll just see here now, as we go into the air, you just see Graham Slaw there getting too eager, trying to get across the gap, get us that little bit of go forward, but in doing so, just finds himself in front of Joe Owen. So when that first Crusader tries to engage, he can't attack the ball. Really easy decision for the referee. Too much territory claimed, but another chance for George Bell to prove himself with the ball in his hands as Maka Springer watches on, well collected again by Gardner. Another player following in his father's footsteps, Gus, for playing for the Crusaders. A chance for a lot of these players that play for the Crusaders affiliate sides to really prove themselves in the red and black jersey this evening as Heinz tries to disrupt things, but it's good, clean ball for Randall. Bit of flair rugby from McGinty, and it almost lands Kylie. It has gone back. Excellent hands from the former All Black Lua Tua. And then it's spilled again, and it's a real mess and melee out there. Eventually, the referee puts us out of our misery, Will. Again, another attacking kick, I think. Even Joe Batley having a go there in the second row, trying to stab one through. I think it's clear that a lot of the opportunities are just coming from those sort of looser situations. So again here, AJ gets it, clubs one off of his weak foot. The bounce of the rugby ball affording itself for James Williams. And as you see here, Bats gets the ball. He spies that opportunity in the backfield, tries to find it, but uh, his weak foot not doing him justice quite like uh, AJ's did, uh, did 10 seconds before him. It's been a game of set pieces so far as Randall will wait for his forward pack to crouch down and engage. And when you're coming up against a side like the Crusaders will, what are the, the sounds and the smells and the tension like in, in these situations? Well, I mean, part of how successful they've been is come down to a lot of their set-piece statistics. As a forward group, we've been previewing them in the week. They're the top performing scrum in their competition annually. They've not conceded a mall try in five seasons. They're an incredible forward pack, but just their excellent work from Carl Sinclair pinning his loose head prop, getting us that penalty advantage now, which we're playing with, and hopefully uh, will afford us more pressure going forward. Exactly, here we are, coming back for it now. It's a very ambitious ball out to Hewitt, which almost paid off, but he was uh, running out of grass in the end. As you say, Will, will come back across in front of 
the Dolman stand. And for those of you that are unaware, maybe watching in the US or back in New Zealand, the round of applause at Ashton Gates comes from the fans after everybody connected at the club was saddened to hear of the tragic deaths of local teenagers Mason Rist and Max Dixon. Two young lives needlessly lost in our local community with whom we stand tall with and send our deepest condolences to Mason and Max's families and friends and those impacted by these terrible tragedies. And a really well-respected round of applause from those Crusaders fans that are here in their numbers as well tonight at Ashton Gate. It was a really successful line out there for the Bears and now they find themselves five metres out with solid ball at the foot of this driving ball. Van Rensburg has joined as well to add a bit of meat as Carl Sinclair tries to keep the structure of this ball going. Will the Bears drive over here? There is clean ball for Randall, spots her player out on that left hand side but it struck the referee and the referee's pulled it back but a moment of comedy there to add to everything Will. Oh and a moment of frustration I imagine for for Randall the space was there as he came out the back of that mall you could see an excellent mall build from Bristol and equally good defense coming in there from the Crusaders just working to stay in front of it but as you see there AJ just spots that gap in 10 meters one-on-one -on -one space Oh, that, that, that could have been first points to the Bears, but another opportunity now through the set piece. That last scrum was really effective from Bristol. Sickler getting, getting on top of his man. So hopefully now we can build pressure and attack again on their five metre line with another penalty advantage. Carl Sinclair falling out of favour with England ahead of the Six Nations, made the World Cup squad, signed for the Bristol Bears from Harlequins after nine years in West London. Can he capitalise here? Randall waits for his opportune moment. If you could see Will alongside me, he's studying that scrum with real intent. Not clean ball at the back, but it's, no, it hasn't gone back according to the referee. And again, it's just these handling errors, Will, that are sneaking in at the moment. Yeah, that's a really sloppy one, unfortunately. We had a good clean strike, ball was sat at the second row's feet. We could have left that in there for longer, just seen what we could get out of it, but obviously conversation between Magnus and Rands wanted to play the ball. But with that stronger setup, we could have used that time to get the ball right to the back of the scrum. Oh, frustrating one for Bristol, as that's a real let off five metres away from the Crusaders line. Just see there, gets caught in Luatua's feet as Magnus is trying to pull, pull the ball away from the scrum. Just st stumbles out of his hands. Frustrating. Can they reapply the pressure though on Calder Bell and Sykes Martin? A very young front row. It's a solid one though for the Crusaders. Leo Willie comes flying out the back and into contact and has gained his side a few extra yards and now Hines will look to secure some territory. Invented from Lane there as he tries to scoop up for a second time. The Crusaders could be away for a minute but the ball had left the park. It's a scrappy affair so far. I don't think many tuning into this would have predicted that after almost 20 minutes here on Bears TV, we'd still be without any points. The rain is absolutely lashing it down out there at the moment. Which is really stifling both teams who have very attacking intents, very attacking styles of play. I think this one's going to be fought hard tooth and nail. Randall into Lua Tua, the former All Black himself. A special occasion for him, no doubt. He was mic'd up in a real first for Premiership Rugby in the game against Bath as Crusaders steal possession and Leo Willey who had the most, the fifth most carries in Super Rugby for 2023 is looking at his destructive best but again loose ball means it's out of play and this time the Bears will have the line out. 
Really good reaction there, though, from the Bristol, Bristol outside backs. I didn't see quite who was putting pressure on there, but with all of these loose balls, it's very important to recognise the opportunities on transition. When a ball goes to floor like that, it's very easy for us to switch off, to try and look for someone to blame, but lads are reacting incredibly well. And that, we, that way we were able to force Crusaders back and back, find that touchline, and now we've got another opportunity to attack. This time the line-out is loose. Big hit there on. Now Largo is the man. Stopping the Crusaders in their tracks as Hines secures quick ball this time, and it's out into the midfield. Chance for the Crusaders to spring an attack, something we've not seen too much of in this opening 20 minutes. Yaki happy to join that attacking back line. He's just there on the collar, the coattails of Corey Kello. Referee calling for the Bears players to get back on side. They've conceded a penalty as Carl Sinclair pleads his innocence. Now there's space for the away side. And it's Bell that goes barreling through, makes his way over the 22-metre line. Quick ball secured by Hines. Crusaders now looking more likely, gathering some rhythm when it matters the most as Bell comes forward again. This time it's lost, but the referee will pull us back for that earlier penalty for the offside. Oh, a scintillating line there from Bell. Reminiscent of our own Harry Thacker, just coming from out to in, across the eye line. Rayana drifting across as well, just making Fitz question who his man is. And that opens up the hole for the young hooker to steam onto the ball. Some good footwork. And that's the sort of dangerous attacking play that Crusaders can bring. And now an opportunity for them to, to flex their muscles and see how they can stretch us through the set piece themselves. As Bell has to compose himself after that line break, dry a ball and, and get back to job one, win this line out. Good clean kick into the corner by Rihanna. Bears now need to be at their defensive best as Jamie Hanna comfortably collects. Secured by Bell at the base of that driving mall, which starts to swivel around. Bears dealing with things fairly well at the moment. Referee just trying to gain a sight of the position of that ball. Very slow progress made by the Crusaders, and it's won back by the Bears, and that's excellent defensive work as Carl Sinclair Looks to secure clean ball, and now it's Randall into the midfield. Bears looking to run from inside their own half, and rightly so. We were promised some flair rugby tonight. Will we get it as it's uh, spilled again? And that just provides, I think, the Crusaders with an opportunity there just to try and raise the, the noise level and the tempo of this game. Yeah, it's an unfortunate one for Bristol. I think as a team we've often been known for our no-fear style of rugby and you can see there that the opportunity was on. And on a drier day Noah might have been confident enough to fly that ball one more pass wider, find that space right on the edge but instead he has to carry it into contact and at every contact at the moment just with that, with that wet pill it's becoming really an absolute dogfight every breakdown. Crusaders doing well just to disrupt that, that attempt to get the ball out quickly, forcing a knock on. And again, as you said now, that's an opportunity to put pressure on at the scrum. The Crusaders in tricky conditions in front of a raucous 30,000 in Cork at Parky Kiev. Went down 21 points to 19 in the end, but only after a late conversion attempt from Rihanna went a missing, dragged just wide in the swirling wind as the Bears secure good ball, and that's a wonderful run from Hewitt. And now the Bears will look to break and stretch their legs up towards the halfway line. Good quick thinking from Harry Randall. We've got numbers out on that left-hand side as Richie Lane feeds it into Siva. Now Largo tries to keep the ball in play and in doing so relinquishes possession. The best sight of that attacking rugby that we've seen so far, though, from the Bears as they win back ball through McGinty. Sinclair 
swivels it out to Lua Tua, who in those fluorescent yellow boots will look to skip beyond this tackler. Bradbury's turn to try and burst between defenders. Infield it goes to Lua Tua over the 22 metre line and that's just energised the home fans as Sinclair muscles his way beyond the tackler, George Bell. More like it from the Bears. An excellent set of phases there from Bristol, starting off with that Noah, Noah line break down the touchline. What incredible footwork here. Steps one, bumps off another, accelerates, finds that offload, and Joe Owen, our, our young blindside lock, doing a remarkable job there to keep the ball alive. And we move it to that width, allowing a newly fit Siva to get down the touchline. It was really good scramble defence from the Crusaders in the end, but then Bristol putting that pressure on at the breakdown, turning it into a dogfight once again, piling the numbers in, getting that turnover, and then a Crusaders player trying to force the ball back, coming in at the side, gives Bristol again another opportunity to kick to corner. And now we go to the Pestle and Moore to try and go grind down that Crusaders defence with another Maul attack on their five metre. AJ McGinty, 31 appearances for the Bears since signing from Sale and it's good ball for the home side and it receives a nod of approval from Will alongside me. Davies at the back of this scrum, maybe a try for him is on the cards here as the Bears edge further forward again. Randall just waiting patiently, it's still with Davies there, has he touched down? He has! And what a moment for him. Join the Bears back in 2022. I think Joe Batley enjoyed that one. He certainly did. And that's just livened things up at Ashton Gate. The Bears muscle over for the first points of this game as we approach the 30-minute mark at Ashton Gate. That was a really good mall build from Bristol as we go to the replay here. Just a simple movement to the front. A great punch from the first three forwards just gets us that first inch. And we just got to slowly keep our legs moving. And then as the referee's hand comes down, you see our three backs, Van Rensburg, Williams and now Lago coming in to add their weight. And then it's just a battle of battle of weight we brought those numbers in patience at the back of that mall Fred doing really well to just stay alive wait for that movement and then as he sees that line open up that quick dive to floor and what a try for Bristol to open the scoring now to the experienced boots of McGinty to add a further two as the swirling wind no doubt takes hold well, the South Stands enjoy a ripple of applause from the Ashton Gate faithful. And the Bears are seven up. Of course, you were scorer of the opening try in the West Country Derby. Unfortunately, had to go off then. Uh, well injured shortly after that. But special moment for you scoring in such a massive game. Full house as well. And I've never heard it quite as loud as that day against Bath. Oh, it was huge. I mean, such an amazing occasion for the city. Bringing together those, those hard weeks where we haven't been quite at our best. We found that performance in the game that really mattered to our fans. And on a personal note, obviously, to get over against uh, the local derby is always a proud moment. Something us fans can only imagine as the Bears look for solid ball inside their own 22. And it comes through the boot of Harry Randall, an effective kick, which has gained a decent bit of distance as well. Bang on the 10 metre line inside the Bears half. Well, having seen some of the exciting stuff in that last set of, pl set of play, good to see there. After scoring in these conditions, it's so important not to give away easy ball on that kickoff. Just some comfortable phases, test the waters, but seeing that nothing was on, a solid kick from Rands. 
allows us now to get into our set piece defense. Beautiful offload there, you have to say, from Leo Willy. Wonderful hands from the big man at number eight. With that bleach blonde hair. But it's met with robust defensive work from the Bears. Batley, who's in fine, fine form, teaming up with Lua Tua. The Crusaders, though, looking for a response. Penalty to the away side. Rihanna looking for a few dents and chinks in the Bristol armour. That hasn't quite come off. But it will be a penalty, though, for the Crusaders. An unfortunate penalty there going against Joe Owen. Working hard to try and get away, roll away after the tackle, but just found himself on top of the ball, trapped in by a couple of legs. Wasn't quick enough in the eyes of the referee. And whilst it was initially a good exit, this now invites that pressure from the Crusaders with an excellent kick from Ray Harder. Finding the five metre, and now it's the Crusaders' turn to have a go from five metres out. Can Bear stop the same result at their own end of the pitch? There's ever such thing as the perfect kick to touch there. That was it, bang on the five metre line. A chance now for George Bell. Do the Crusaders have that look of ruthlessness in their eyes as they look to rumble home? Penalty, according to the referee, as Hines waits for his options. He had the cry to go on the blind side by Maka Springer. Too little, too late, though, as they go further right. But more strong defensive work from the Bears, and we'll come back for that earlier penalty. Yeah, I think Bears will be happy that it was only a penalty. Crusaders built with a, a quick back corner, tried to say the, take the back edge of that move with an early spin. Just found themselves in a bit of space and I'm not sure who came in to bring that down. But luckily brought it down far, and all, far away enough from the line that the referee didn't deem it uh, preventing a try. But now another crack. Bears have to be a little bit more aware of the, the trick ball that might be coming in. Get bodies in front of it early. Finally balanced this game as George Bell consults call number four, sending this towards one of his colleagues. The line out is good, it's picked off the back and it could be from one hooker to another here. As George Bell goes over, but it's held up. Again, quick thinking from the Bears. That was exceptional reactions from Fred Davis there on the blind side. Seems to have hurt himself a little bit in the process. Well, with the injury list, we can't afford that, can we? We <laughs> certainly can't. But as we see here, they do a quick build. And as soon as Bell gets in on the ball here, thinks he sees an opportunity against Randall. But Davis there coming out from the mall, seeing that pick, getting in underneath and holding it up over the line, that's exceptional work from the hooker. As one of the Crusaders players now is receiving treatment. It's the man that captained the side in court, Quinton Strange. Down at the moment, his vice captain tonight. Said it was a bit of a surprise to be uh, named as touring captain, but what an honor for him. Did go to the bin in the first half in Cork. He's, uh, making the small town of Takaka very proud. Raised in the rural community of Collingwood. He earned selection in the 2020 All Black squad before his season was cut short and he suffered with a nasty angle injury during the All Blacks training. The chance for these players to come back together and will hopefully see you back out there soon. Oh, I hope so, Toby, I hope so. 
But a congratulation, of course, is in order. You've just completed your law degree, which is fantastic news. Achieving a 2-1. How do you manage all of that? Precariously, Toby. Uh, it was incredibly high pressure while I was doing it, and I'm, I'm incredibly proud of myself and delighted that it's over to some extent. But ultimately very proud that I was able to get the result that I did doing the job that I do and now after five years of study have the opportunity to put all of my eggs into the rugby basket and as soon as I do I'm out for, for an indeterminate amount of time with an injury so could have done with that time to study but now it's done I suppose uh, swings and roundabouts silver linings is giving me the opportunity to sit with he with you here tonight mate well, it's uh, very impressive how you manage it all you almost saw a a sign there of that Crusaders sparkle. The ball had gone forward, so we'll have a scrum. It's in the grateful arms of Harry Randall. See this again. There was a moment before that as well that Leah Willey went careering forward and did not envy any player that decided to get in the way of the big man. Another player that takes uh, life off the pitch very seriously as well. He's not long completed his dentistry degree. New career for him after rugby as that's well secured by the Bears and they switch direction through McGinty. Lane tries to kick through and it could land kindly here. Doesn't think it's just spilled forward. Yes, it was by a player in a red and black shirt. And Willie Hines <laughs> protests, I think, with the referee to suggest maybe there's players struggling with the conditions. But it's been a bit stop-start this first half, but a great spectacle nonetheless. Oh, I think you could certainly tell that the occasion excited the fans. I mean, that hacker with the smoky backdrop was just an incredible thing to see on the Ashton Gate turf. I was grinning ear to ear like a Cheshire cat, absolutely loving it, soaking it all in. And I'm sure for the players down there as well, everyone must be working at 11, completely amped up after that start. And as you said, a bit unfortunate that the weather is currently getting in the way of perhaps some of the flowing rugby we might have expected. But at the same time as a forward, the uh, physical challenge of multiple set pieces, going toe to toe with one another at at scrum, at maul, and similarly the, the challenge of these attacking kicks that AJ's been utilising as well as the Crusaders and how the opportunities have come as a result of those has still provided some interesting, interesting watching for the first half. Pile of players in blue shirts down there. There's a lot of excitement around this Northern Hemisphere tour. Mansbridge, the CEO of the Crusaders, said how delighted he was that this opportunity came about. It's too good to pass up as it spilled again. The glare of the Ashton Gate floodlights getting in the eyes of Matt Ailey. But the penalty had already been given by the referee. Offside at the kick chase is a very frustrating one to give away in that area of the pitch. You could just see Siva was so keen to get after that ball but just mistimed the start of his run. Yeah, you could see Bradbury and now Largo down that touchline, a couple of yards ahead of Rands, and that's all it takes. Really good spot from the referee. And again, just inviting that pressure through a really soft penalty. Crusaders now 15 metres away from Bristol's line, where they'd want to be with two minutes to go in the half. And lovely line-up ball. Off goes Leo Willey. Checks inside. Looking for Mata Ailey's win. Hines changes direction. Space for the Crusaders out on that right-hand side as they look to draw level in this encounter in Bristol. Hines again bides his time. It's a firm grip on that slippery ball. We'll go again here. Through the number five, Jamie Hanna, who tumbles over the five-meter line. Big options 
in the midfield. It was Rover that came flying out the traps there to meet that pass as Hannah crunches into the collision again. Willie Hines wants options to his left and Bell joins the party. He's got Sykes Martin with him, but it's out into the backs and there could be a try here for the Crusaders. It's Maka Springer that goes leaping over the whitewash. A really strong set of phases leading up to that try, coming off of that line-out set piece. Getting back ball in these conditions, and then that little off-the-top delivery, finding Leo Willey on the charge with Mataeli. And that dent just started that pressure, which then came with multiple hard lines off of, off of Willie Hines. And then on that final play there, as he called men round, Rehana just spots the opportunity, calls it out the back, and just some very slick handling in the conditions, opens up that space for Macaspring down that left touch line for the finish. But a tough kick now for Rehana to draw it level going into half time. Well, Rob. Penny hailed Rihanna for his accuracy. He was just off target in that clutch moment at the end of the game in Cork, but it was so tricky. You saw the ball just move from right to left in front of the posts. Can he draw Crusaders level here on the stroke of half time? I have to say, it's a wonderful kick straight down the middle of the sticks. And uh, that will be the end of the first half action at Ashton Gates. Fireworks quite literally at the beginning of the game. We were treated to a real spectacle as well with the Takina Tekawa hacker. And it was the Bears that really got things going in that first half. A wonderful try for Fred Davies as well on his 12th appearance for the Bears. Rumbled over at the base of that driving mall. We thought George Bell was going to tumble over the line as well for the Crusaders and go from one hooker to another. It wasn't to be, but eventually the pressure told for the Crusaders. So the score at Ashton Gates at the interval then, it's the Bears 7, Crusaders 7. Honours even down there. Uh, well, it wasn't quite the... We had the fireworks at the very start. It wasn't quite the free-flowing play that we were all expecting. I guess the conditions play a big part in that. Yeah, I mean, like you can see there, the ball's obviously very slippery. Um, it's hard to put together, so there's multiple phases, which we promised the viewers. Um, but, um, <laughs> we, we jinxed it. Yeah, but, there. you know, there's still been plenty of rugby. You know, we can see the Endeavour both sides trying to throw the ball about. Um, it's obviously just hard to keep hold of it. It's obviously very greasy, um, hence why probably both teams are kicking more than they usually would. Um, but, I, I, you know, I still think the game's going to open up and I, I'm still confident of more tries in the second half. <laughs> it very much felt, didn't it, in the last sort of 10, 12 minutes, it sort of sprung into life. Yeah, definitely, I think. The players will get a grasp of what they need to do, the adjustments that they need to make to be able to hold on to that ball. Both teams are definitely trying to throw it around. It's mm. not through a lack of effort. Um, See, so they'll make the adjustment, and I'm confident of that. We've got both teams have got players that adapt very easily. So we'll, it'll, it'll come to. Yeah, well, uh, we will uh, hopefully go down pitch side in a moment to talk to a few of the players. Just a word on the atmosphere. I know that you've spoken about Munster and how big the noise was. I mean, I can hear the roaring from uh, the studio. There hasn't been too much to roar about, but when I heard the try, I thought, yes, someone's in. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's it's loud when the, when the crowd is get their voice up. It's, it's so cool down there, even just as a spectator and soaking it all up. So I'm sure as the players on the field, I know if I was out there, I'd be loving that kind of atmosphere as well. Yeah. OK, well, uh, we're going to talk through some of the highlights. Thankfully, there was some action uh, to look through. Let's have a look through uh, those, shall we, first. So the first one up, I guess, this was sort of the, the, the start of the movement of starting to see something. Uh, Noah Howard there with the line break. Yeah, so, you know, Noah's, I think he's been outstanding first. He's probably been the, the, pick of the pick of the players on the pitch, I think. And he's a player that can just create something out of nothing. Um, and we've got a big mindset about keeping the ball alive. Um, sort of trying to take that edge there. Uh, you know, I think the Crusaders defend this very well, actually, in terms of the way they scramble. Um, and that's probably been the frustration for, for us the first half. We've sort of done a lot of good things. We've, we've got in behind the Crusaders, and then we've probably tried to force their extra pass, which has let them off the hook. So, you know, we'd be really pleased with that. We'd probably just be frustrated with the end and not being able to finish it. OK. Well, that's the uh, first little highlight that we had to show. But uh, we can now just cross down to pitch side, because I think Downsy is with Max Maylands. 
The rain's coming down here. We've got fireworks going off left, right and centre. Uh, Max, we were expecting an, uh, an entertaining first half. Thoughts on that first 40? Uh, well, obviously, yeah, conditions are dictating, uh, or definitely the scoreboard uh, and the amount of mistakes in the game. Uh, I think there's still been quite good, some good intent to play rugby from both sides, but yeah, just a few handling errors here and there, slowing it down a bit. What's the changing room like at half time? What what the messages be? What happens? Does Pat talk? Do you go into groups? Uh, so straight when we walk in, the the leaders group will get together, um, come up with some key themes from the half, what we need to work on, what's going well, um, and then we'll split into our backs and forwards with our respected coaches, and then Pat will then get everyone together and then deliver the key messages going out to the second half. Who's been outstanding for you so far out there? Who's caught your eye? Hewitt's been uh, been really good. Uh, he's been working in some tight spaces, but showing some great footwork, uh, made a nice line break, uh, or two nice line breaks. Um, so yeah, I think he's been a standout. A sleeping giant on Noah, isn't he? Because he's such a cool guy as well. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's a, he's a brilliant character to have around uh, around the place. Uh, yeah, really interesting guy and, and a funny guy. So yeah, good to see him going well. Right, so two key messages for the boys coming out for the second half. What would they be if you were in charge today? If I was in charge, God. Uh, well, I think it's clear is to um, to be more accurate with the ball. Um, I think, look, if you're playing a lot of phases, you're gonna you're gonna end up spilling the ball at some play, uh, some point. So playing in the right areas and then being accurate with the ball in hand when we do want to play. Good stuff, Max. I'll let you go and get a cup of coffee. Perfect. Thank you very much. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Max Malins. There, Lisa. Back to you. Dancy, thanks very much for that. Uh, so Max Malin's thoughts, uh, we, we uh, have uh, heard his analysis. Let's have a look through. We were just starting through the highlights of uh, that first half, as we said, just starting to spring into life with that line break from Noah Howard. But then this was kind of the moment where we were all hoping for. Something to cheer about from uh, a Bears point of view, at least. Yeah, I think um, something we've actually been speaking about a lot in the week um, I think I've got this correct, but the Crusaders haven't conceded a more try for the last five years, correct? Yeah, this one hurts a that little. incredible. It does it's hurt. It's an area that we pride ourselves in and that we take, but it's an area of the game that's such fine margins, and when something doesn't quite go well with Bristol, you can tell that they've put a lot of work into this area. The intent that they bring and the intent that they show, it's tough to stop, and credit to you boys, really. And any time Bex joined them all, you know, it must be a good thing. <laughs> they, 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 yeah. don't, they don't tend to like getting their head in there. Yeah, I think the technical term was a shove over yeah. that Fred Davies uh, got over the whitewash. But, I mean, that is a phenomenal start. I mean, I think you said, yeah, 2017 to 22, to not concede uh, a, a, a morning try. It's just, that's, that's astounding. Yeah. So good work by the Bears and the coaching team to uh, work on that. Yeah, it's something, like I said, it's something that's been sort of talked about a lot this week, so the forwards will be buzzing with that. Joe, I told you Joe Batley liked salaryman with the fans. That was slightly over the top from him. But, yeah. um, well, we all thought it was him. At well, yeah, so did I. I thought he'd yeah. scored the try. <laughs> we were all like, it, 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 was it Bats? Uh, yeah. Oh, no, it was Fred Davis. Well, uh, Fred Davis was busy at both ends, evidently, because uh, next highlight is uh, him working up the other end um, and, and saving us to a certain extent. Yeah, I think the thing, you know, the good thing about Fred is um, he's probably been waiting, you know, more than he'd want to for his opportunity. And, you know, in rugby, when injuries happen, someone else gets a step in. Fred was excellent off the bench last week against Bath, and he's been excellent again first half here. Like you've seen, he scored seven points and saved us seven points there. You know, Rands gets his body in, in, in front of him. I think that's Adj, AJ getting underneath as well. So, you know, it shows that even in a sort of exhibition game, you know, boys are really sort of digging in for each other, which is which is good to see. Yeah, it is exhibition only in name, though, isn't it? Yes, Everyone wants to come home with the victory on us, but it wasn't all Bears' way. In the final uh, minutes of half time, uh, obviously, uh, Crusaders getting over the line courtesy of uh, Macca I think it was. Yeah, I think it was well built up by a lot of effort from the Fords. You can see Willie Hines there orchestrating and bringing the guys around, which potentially creates that overlap on the edge for Macca to. Uh, to just dive over and finish. He's a spectacular finisher of a lot of tries, so that was probably one of his more straightforward ones. Um, but yeah, a lot of hard work from the forwards to get us into that position, and then Willie Hines to orchestrate like he, like he does at the back of the ruck. Yeah, and you'd spoken about that in the build-up to it, about how good he is at calling and keeping the team together. In terms of, you know, in terms of the performance so far from Crusaders, are you, I mean, obviously the uh, conditions probably have a, a lot to answer for, but like you say, they're probably now all settled. Yeah, I think we can be very happy with our defence. Like we alluded to, the scramble defence that we've shown, uh, there's a lot of care there and a lot of boys wanting to make that extra effort to ensure that the Bears don't get over the line. Um, you can see that. 
our first up defense is probably something that we want to improve around making sure that we don't allow those line breaks and put ourselves under unnecessary pressure. Um, but yeah, can't fault the effort, can't fault how much the boys are willing to go that extra mile. Mm. And uh, the kickers, Callum, both of them are adding to the points and making the conversions. How difficult is it on a night? The wind wasn't swirling too much around those posts, I don't think. No, but I think um, any sort of kick from those positions, that AJ kicked a good one from the touchline and, and the Crusaders lad kicked a, a great kick there at the end. And the difference those two points can make at the end of the game is massive. So, you know, kudos to both of them. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we've heard what the talk is going on in the dressing room. I'll ask for you your thoughts on that. Both of you have been in those dressing rooms uh, uh, recently. But let's have a, a listen. We've just heard from the players uh, halfway through this exciting encounter. And before we head back out there, let's hear from the men in charge of these two sides. Earlier in the week, Bears director of rugby, Pat Lamb, he sat down with the Crusaders head coach, Rob Penny. And they sat down together to not only preview the game, but reminisce about their glory days and the younger years. Rob, welcome to Bristol. How's the Northern Tour treated you and, and how are you guys looking forward to Friday night? Yeah, thanks very much. It's a joy to be here. We've had a, an amazing 10 days so far and uh, you know, our experience in Munster was pretty unique. Um, being able to play in Cork in, in front of 40, 3,000 people on a, in a pre-season match it, it, with that intensity was magic for us and you know we're f very honoured to be here in Bristol and um, you know welcomed by Pat and his, his staff has been fantastic and looking forward to Friday night to, to um, I guess bed in the stuff that we can learn out of the Munster and then take it back to our competition start on the 23rd. Yeah, how does this how does this fixture how do these fixtures fit into your preparation for the new season that's that's coming soon? Yeah, well, it's like uh, the alternative is to be playing in front of 500 people in Timaru uh, or something similar. So, you know, it's a rapid start. Obviously, the intensity and the the comp competitive nature of these fixtures is well up on probably what we would be getting. Uh, in pre-season back in New Zealand so there's some benefits there and um, you know I think it'll hold us in really good stead heading into our first competition game so that that's our hope but there's obviously the travel which we have to be mindful of but you know good athletes young men they'll get over it and we'll be into it when we're when we get home. And Pat you've spoken in the lead up to this game about relishing the challenge of facing a, a club of the calibre of the Crusaders why will Friday night be so special? Oh, I think just you mentioned the Crusaders. Everyone in the world knows the Crusaders. Just the history of what they've achieved. The it's not only what they've achieved; it's the way they've done it um, on and off the field. Um, the type of rugby they played, the the people that they brought through, you know, all, all the things that we we try to emulate. That's not just about becoming a, a really good rugby player, but a good person. And so, to have. Um, have Rob and the team come up here is a huge privilege for us and it's a challenge that we're all looking forward to. Um, I think, you know, the type of rugby that they want to play, the type of rugby we want to play is going to be a great, be a great night, you know. Um, you know, both teams uh, really going out to, um, to, to entertain. We, we, we just had a great catch up and we're just talking about where the game is and the responsibility that we all have as coaches, uh, as players, as teams to um, to really entertain all the key st stakeholders because we've got a great game but people want to see the game played in the right way and, and we both certainly do, both clubs want to so no, it's, it's going to be a great night. And you've both coached against each other in the Pro Tour from your, your days in Ireland. What, what do you expect, Pat, from a, a team coached by Rob Penny? <laughs> well, look at him, tough, rugged. <laughs> Uh, no, no backwards. Actually, I'll give you a story. When uh, my first time I played Canterbury, uh, Rob's only a little bit older than me, and it was my debut. Rob been around for a while. I was in a lineout, and boom! I got a. In those days, there's no TMOs, but he gave me a good, a good whack, and I was thinking, all right, welcome to this level. What am I going to do about it? And uh, it was a really good introduction to rugby at the next level. There, yeah, there's skill and and so forth, but you've got to be, you know, you got to be tough and. Uh, and I think if, uh, if uh, you know, every time you, you play a team that's coached by Rob, um, yeah, there'll be the skill and so forth, but there's going to be a real toughness and um, uh, a team that will be tough to beat. And uh, so uh, it's going to be a great challenge. Ah, oh, I love a technical term, a good whack. Now, welcome <laughs> to rugby, isn't it? That's, that's the uh, asserting the dominance. Um, 
just talk while we were watching that in terms of, you know, Penny's got a big act to follow, hasn't he? I mean, he's talking about Pat saying what tough rugby you play, but I mean, goodness me, he's had a tough act to follow with, uh, you know, I think I'm being won all 12 of the last t titles, his predecessor. So it's a hard act to follow. It's a rebuilding phase, is it? Yeah, well, I wouldn't say rebuilding. I think what Penns has done really well and to his, to his credit, he's just come in and made it his own. He hasn't tried to reinvent the wheel. He hasn't tried to change everything for the sake of coming in. But what he has done is transitioned the group to something slightly different, slightly new, but he's just really been himself through the whole process. And that's, I guess, a great attribute to have. Like he knows who he's strong and who he is yeah. and the group really respects it. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think we're in, the, we're in a really good place moving into the season. Yeah, I'm sure Crusaders fans are looking forward to it starting and, uh, and see how it goes. Well, there we go. The uh, teams are now running out for the start of the second half. So I will hand you back over to our commentary team of Will Capon and Toby Osborne. Thank you, uh, Lisa. Yes, the flame throwers uh, are back out as we look to see some fierce rugby in this second half. Still, the rain lashes down at Ashton Gate. Just trying to ascertain whether there's been any changes for either side at half time. I don't think there has. No injuries in the first half, which is fantastic as well. So we are as we were at the start of the first half. And it will be Rayana to get us underway, kicking towards the south stand as it's known at Ashton Gate. The Crusaders were kicking towards the Atio stand in the first half. Named after famous Bristol City football club player who Ashton Gate hosts for the football as well alongside the Bristol Bears. Kicked to touch after a bit of a spill. It will be a Crusaders line out to get us underway in this second half just outside the Bears 22. A reminder, both sides have named a 26-man squad for this encounter. So there are 11 options on the bench to mix things up in the second half. But that's loose again in the midfield by the Crusaders, gobbled up by Richie Lane. Van Rensburg takes the scrum half roll and finds the big man, Lua Tua. will be a penalty for the Bears and a chance to kick for some metres as well. Second half here starting very similar to the first. A loose ball, knock on on the floor. Excellently cleaned up by Rich Lane. And then a penalty at what is becoming an absolute dogfight in the breakdown. Chance for the Bears then at this line out through the hands from Randall into the midfield. Fitz Harding crunching into the collision on the 10 metre line. Back slaps all round from Leo Willey as the Crusaders retain the ball and again themselves now will look to find some territory. And as Rob Penny said, Rihanna has been pretty much immaculate from the boot in his kicking so far. And he finds some good distance again that time. Bang on the Bears, 22-metre line. Yeah, it's a really good jackal here from, from Crotty and from their seven there, Corey Kello. Both getting into really good positions, supporting each other, giving each other that extra bit of load as the Crusaders go over the top of the line-out directly to Crotty, who's now involved again. Seen a great deal of Ryan Crotty, the, the veteran of 152 Super Rugby games for the Red and Blacks in the first half. And we see some more expansive rugby in the second. This time it does swing out to Rover. In the small village of Vusaratu. Held on the floor there momentarily, but released 
just quickly enough for the referee to let play continue. Swung out to that far side in front of the Dolman stand. Hasn't gone forward according to the referee. Big chance here for the Crusaders. And there were palms on top of the ball there, but who got there first? Crusaders don't look overly confident. Nope, the referee has signalled no try. No, it was excellent work right there from Maka Springer. Just that short dink over the top. And a situation where our back three probably felt a little too comfortable. Just cruising. Nearly finds that opportunity, but thankfully isn't able to get a solid hand through and it gives us a goal line dropout to hopefully relieve some pressure. Crusaders head back to face the Highlanders next Friday before the Super Rugby season gets back underway as they look to make themselves 13-time champions. It wasn't an easy route to the title last season. Came second in the regular season before that big win in the final. 25 points to 12. Sam Whitelock, man of the match. Richie Muonga with a try in that game as well. They've enjoyed their Northern Hemisphere tour so far. In fact, this week they spent a bit of time at the uh, at local college training as well as visiting the Bristol Bears High Performance Centre just nearby down the road, a couple of miles away here outside Bristol. Spent some time training as well at Clifton College School, one of the local schools in Bristol alongside the Scarlets as they uh, continue their preparation for the return of the United Rugby Championship. Dwayne Peel's side really enjoyed their day training with the Crusaders. Some excellent preparation for both of these two teams as Leo Willey pops it out to Willie Hines when he's met by the fierce intent of Van Rensburg who gets back onto his feet and charges at Jamie Hanna down there. Past the five metre line now, the Crusaders. Not the free flowing rugby we're used to. They're having to take the route one approach and force their way through this Bristol Bears defensive set. Seb Calder takes it on, all 121 kilos of him. And that's flung out to that left hand side, and there could be a try. Was it held? The referees come together. There's a signal as though they'll check that one as to whether there was a grounding. A really good set from Crusaders. Like you said, just going away from what perhaps they're best known for, but just doing this simple stuff really well, building the phases, creates that little opportunity down the touchline. The referee deems it a no try. The referee, just as Willie Hines, just checks his pass. Not yet, not happy with the grounding, and you can see close up there as to why. So he's pulled it back for a scrummage just to the left-hand side of the posts. And both hookers into the lunge position, ready to prepare themselves for this scrum down, which will be in favour of the Crusaders in the palms of Willie Hines. Some of these Crusaders players sporting torf facial hair. Willie Hines with an exceptional, exceptional tash there. Bang on the five metre line then, he's got his scrum ready. Now he's looking for clean ball, will he go left or right? An even spread of Crusaders players both ways. Gobbled up by Fiaki, but he's pushed back. And Hines now will gather again. Look to go left, lovely quick hands. There's Gardner with them, and that's loose that time as he tried to do the same. The Bears now will regroup. Looks as though the Crusaders are preparing a quadruple switch on the near side down here. Tane Robinson, a man that I can see stripped and ready to come on as the Crusaders win a penalty and the Bears are pushed back. Will we see this change now? Looks as though it will be a new look-ish front row with Moa Anu set to come on. George Boa down there as well. Some fresh legs now and a chance for Rob Penny to see more players in action as Rihanna picks it out of touch for another five-metre 
line out. Crusaders here just continuing to build pressure on Bears. Having made that nice break off of that little offload, Bristol looked like they finally got to the end of that set, winning the turnover, but Crusaders giving them nothing easy. But great jump from Joe Owen at the back, and that underthrow from Bell gives us the opportunity to turn the ball over and have another go at trying to relieve the pressure off of our own line. Randall thumps the ball upfield. It's a really good kick. He's found touch. Now I suspect we will see these uh, changes. Great to see the big man Ed Holmes back as well. He joined us actually for a Q&A in the Heineken suite for the West Country Derby. And you could tell he was desperate to get back onto the field as Leah Willey crashes over the halfway line. Still those players wait patiently on the touchline for their introduction. Crusaders in possession. They've had the majority of it in this opening nine minutes of the second half as Leo Willey thunders into the chest of his tackler there. Fiaki through the hands to Rova. Hines changes direction. Referee is happy for play to continue. Sykes Martin there that rumbled on and now it's pushed back to Fiaki again, who sends one high under the floodlights, who will collect. Richie Lane takes charge and gathers beautifully. Mata Ailey there, waiting patiently on the blind side. It's out to Luatua. He rumbles into contact. And still those poor players doing some warm-up drills down there on the touchline. Wait for their moments. Really delicate chip there from McGinty, almost into the path of Van Rensburg, but it's well gathered by Fiaki, and he'll now counter-attack. It's Bell that moves beyond the defender. Can he be caught here, Bell? He's got the momentum. Can he find the offload? Not quite, but it's gathered by Willie Hines. The chance is still very much alive here for the Crusaders. Spotted a gap there, and he charges through. Does Dominic Gardner. Quick ball for Willie Hines, and that's a thumping collision there. Oof. Steven now Largo re-announcing himself back on the scene. Delicate chip out to that left-hand side. Has it found hands? It certainly has. And the Crusaders strike first in the second half at Ashton Gates. A wonderful try. Back to their cutthroat best. It's Maka Springer with his second of the evening. And the Crusaders lead. Well, as we said in the first half, the attacking kicks create loose play, create opportunities. And whilst Bears have been able to profit a lot of the time, Ray Harder did exceptionally well to regain that ball off of that chip from AJ. Finds that little half gap and wow, the pace from the hooker Bell, tearing through the middle, got them right up to that five meter. And then it was a case of being patient. The ball comes out the back here, spotting the space on the touchline. A lovely kick out to Maka Springer, who goes over for his second, having been denied once shortly beforehand. And Crusaders now take the lead with what is a relatively easy conversion in front of the sticks. Watch this kick most likely go over for Rayana. Comfortable one for him, and he adds the additional two points. We've had plenty of uh, changes. Moananu on the field for the Crusaders, along with Boa, Noah Hoffman, Kamara, Tane Robinson, and Jack Gray. Ed Holmes and Gabriel Ibatoye on for the Bristol Bears. It'll be interesting to see what the impact is of making a quadruple change this early on into the game. Having just taken to the lead, some top performers coming off. As I said, Bell in the front row was having an exceptional game. Let's see if Moananu can come on and do the same. Other players making way. Exciting also, as you said, to see Ed Holmes back on the pitch, running around, putting pressure on that kick there and forcing an opportunity now for Bristol to attack. 
from just outside the 22. The unmistakable Vaca Tower on for the Bears as well to add some flair in those fluorescent boots of his. Will that just open this game up as Ed Holmes' first contribution is to charge beyond that Crusaders defence? Spilt in the midfield, Williams the man to relinquish possession as Ibatoye tries to burst through. Marmion is on as well for the Bears. Pat Lamb recently reuniting with the title winning scrum half. Both of them were together at Connaught. The halfback winning 28 test caps with Ireland. It's a really experienced player. Probably one of the most memorable of those caps was in fact a Dublin win over the All Blacks back in November of 2018. Just as Richie Lane receives a bit of treatment on the near side. If you can hear uh, the soundtrack of the Lion King in the background, it's because Simba Cam has just emerged on the big screen. And it's being... It's actually received a very impressive response, you've got to say. Give that man a prize, hopefully. And Simba Cam there at Ashton Gate. Good first line out for Moa Nanu. We thought, but the ball was knocked on, and the Bears will have the penalty. Interesting now with the changes to the front row. Like we said, Moa Nanu, George Bauer on now as well. Let's see how this impacts the scrum, which had otherwise been pretty effective for Bristol. Joe Batley has entered the bin as well in amongst all of that, hence why Williams is now joining the scrum. Fitzharding goes to flanker, Bradbury still at the back there, the base of the scrum. Marmion will look to secure good ball here for the Bears. Can they strike back just outside the Crusaders? 22. 15 minutes gone of this second half. Now it's the Crusaders that are on top. Very much a new era now under Scott Penny. After that avalanche of trophies under Scott Robinson. Robertson, a hero back in New Zealand. And with their Without, I should say, their World Cup All Blacks at the moment, but their never say die approach very much on display in Cork. They may have not got off to the cleanest of starts in this game, but they're coming into their own in this second half. But can the Bears respond? Marmion with the put in, Bradbury with the ball into the midfield as Ibatoye joins in, looking to support Wakatawa. 14 appearances for Vakatawa since joining the Bears. Certainly adds some real star quality though, the Fijian, and he set up that move there, and there could be a response for the Bears. There is wonderful rugby from the home side. And it is Marmion that strikes for the Bears. They're purring again. The man, the, 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 crowd. the man knows the way to the try line, doesn't he? In pre-season, went on a ridiculous run of scoring. And again, just doing as all good nines do, just throwing the ball, tracking along the inside. James Williams there, breaking that tackle, busting through. And great awareness, immediately starts looking for his support, sees Marmin on the inside, simple two on one. And despite the best efforts of Corey Kello trying to drag him down, Marms finds the strength, powers through with those little pistons. 
and finds the try line and again hopefully providing an easy conversion for AJ to level it up. And he does just that, the scores are level again, despite being down to 14, the Bears are back on level terms. Did exceptionally well there, Marmion, to actually get the ball to ground, despite three Crusaders players grappling him as he crossed the line. Makatawa thunders into the collision over the 22-metre line. AJ doing the simple thing there, 14 men on the pitch, like we said, there's no need to mess around in our own 22. And the experienced head pops into touch just as he comes off the pitch himself to welcome young, young Sam Worsley. With Johnny Ben Solomon also coming onto the pitch for Carl Sinkler. Some young faces in the Bears Academy that have been impressing at their lone clubs. And it's good to see them coming on now and an exciting fixture for them. Sinclair and McGinty, as you say, make way. Sinclair trudging off. But as you say, what an opportunity as well for Sam Worsley at fly half. Only signed pro terms with the Bears back in July 2022. Played plenty of rugby for local side Clifton as well as he's got used to the men's game. Crusaders will come again. Again, it's spilled through the hands, though. The Bears secure ball they have. The referee initially played advantage. That might end now. It has done. Worsley went for the kick. The referee pulls play back. 21 minutes of this encounter remain, remaining as Quinton Strange has a word with the referee. Been a few fans hoping to see uh, Lee Halfpenny involved tonight. Unfortunately, he was forced off injured versus Munster. The Welshman representing his country, of course, 101 times, and the Lions on four occasions, one of which against the All Blacks in 2017. Sadly for him, made his debut for the Crusaders against Munster. But his game was cut short in his tour of the Northern Hemisphere, a place he knows pretty well, was cut short as well. Hopefully not too long for those Crusaders fans until they see him back in a red and black shirt as Marmion has the put-in. Spilled forward by Worsley, unfortunate for him, maybe a few nerves sneaking in there or just a case of the fact the ball is just so slippery, these conditions are so tough. Quite a bit of respite from the weather, but Doesn't make the surface any easier to contend with. More changes for the Crusaders. Antonio Chalfoun, 26-year-old Locke, comes on, as well as the 21-year-old Fletcher Anderson, who's uh, played for the Crusaders at under-20s in both 2021 and 22. Rookie of the Year at the 22 Mako Awards. Exciting talent now on the scene. Not seen too much of Tane Robinson so far in this second half. Forward comes Noah Hotham. Penalty in favour of the Crusaders. Just a reminder of those players that are now off the bench. Moa, Nanu, Boa, Shalfoon, Anderson, Hotham, Kamara, Tane Robinson and Jack Gray all on the field now for the Crusaders. As for the Bears, Ben's Salomon, 
Kieran, Marmion, Ed Holmes back following injury, which is brilliant. The young fly half, Sam Worsley out there too, as well as Vakatawa and Gabriel Ibatoye. So plenty of fresh faces on the park to see us home as the Crusaders force their way inside five metres. Look at that for a crashing run. Chance here as well for Jack Gray. Can he get over the line? Does touch down. The referee's happy. It was bang on the line, in fact. Big celebrations from the Crusaders as they regain their advantage. Boos ringing around from the Bristol Bears crowd. They weren't happy with that. But it's advantage again for the Crusaders. Two powerful carries there. Off the back of a penalty advantage, a really good mall set from Crusaders. Got Bristol marching back, we forced it down. And with that arm up, you saw Moananu's eyes light up. Here we are from the line out. A great set. Leo Willie at the front leading that drive. Bristol forced to bring it to ground. And as he sees that arm, Moananu lines up Sam Worsley, who does a good job to stop him. But by then, the damage was done. And the ball came out to Jack Gray, who took a lovely little spin step, finding some defenders that weren't expecting to be tackling him. And he just pumps over, reaches for the line, and gets the try that puts Crusaders into the lead. Dan Thomas on the field, Revuvu on the field as well, along with well, what is a special one, actually, Andrew Turner, of course, spent some time with the Crusaders, unexpectedly found himself in the Crusaders matchday squad and came on as a 58th-minute replacement as well last season. But the chance here for the Bears to respond straight away through the hands. Revuvu. Out to Makatawa. As Bradbury collects and... Rumbles on again, the Bears still very much in this game as we approach the closing exchanges. Marmion switches direction, spotted a gap there, doesn't quite penetrate it. And we remain on the 10 metre line. Ibatoye bends Salomon. He's presented the ball. A few players reticent to pick it up. Vuvu. Almost makes his way through the Crusaders' defence. Bears just gathering a bit of momentum. Ravuvu really adding some extra impetus for the home side. Batley now back on the field of play, following his binning. Lua Tua off the pitch now. Ibatoye, explosive running from him, skips inside. Off goes Bradbury, through here, could find Dan Thomas with a correct pass, and it's just cut out by Hotham at the final moment, just as Dan Thomas had the posts in his sights. But still, it's with the Bears. Quick hands from Marmion. Makatawa spots a gap, doesn't quite release the ball to find an offload, and now there could be a chance for the Crusaders as they Enter a foot race here through the midfield. What a collection that is, though. And an immaculate recovery from the Bears, but support is needed. It comes through Dan Thomas. It was Hewitt that got back, but then there's a try for the Crusaders. It's Jack Gray that rumbles over again. And it was just a case of not enough back players back supporting Noah Hewitt. Jack Gray rumbles over for his second since coming off the bench. Well, boos ringing around Ashton Gate Stadium there, and understandably so. Whilst the bodies were thin, they were still over the ball. And it didn't look like Crusaders had gone, gone far enough over to start introducing hands into the situation. After a long kick, we see here Rich Lane, Sam Worsley, Dan Thomas all fighting back. The referee deems it that the counter is sufficient for Jack Gray to play the ball. I would argue that there was still a contest there.
but Crusaders are able to stretch their lead and Jack Gray opportunistically goes over for his second. One that won't sit well with the home fans. Kamara then looking for his first points of the evening since coming off the bench. He doesn't find the sticks in the end. Big gap now between these two sides. 26 points to 14 in favour of the Crusaders. And the Bears now with their work cut out as Kamara trudges back. Another talented young player, just 20 years of age. This is invaluable experience for these young Crusaders. Attended Hamilton Boys High School where he captained their first high school title since 2006. And he plays now alongside his schoolboy friend and now Crusaders teammate in Noah Hotham. Really is touted for his leadership qualities. Big future ahead of him for the Crusaders. Rich Lane, an excellent offload there to find Marmion and through the midfield it comes. Chance for Mavuvu to stretch his legs and he finds Ibatoye. Right up against the touchline, kicks through, puts some real pressure on that Crusaders back line there. Ball is secured, and secured really effectively as well as they were running out of space. And eventually the support does come by Noah Hotham. Tightly up against their own try line here as Awani Moananu takes the ball forward. Hotham now to play through the phases and work their way up the field as Fletcher Anderson takes it on. Well, it was great hands for Rivovo in the middle there just to create that space for Gabs. And the delicate kick putting pressure on. Well diffused by the fullback of Crusaders. But now a real key time in the game for Bristol here. A line out 30 metres out from the Crusaders try line. This set of phases goes well. The game is very much still alive. Can the Bears bring Revovo and Wakatawa into the game as much as possible, as well as Ibatoye? Lovely hands there, but it's spilled once more. Disappointing stuff. Sort of unexpectedly found itself with Sam Worsley. Come back for an earlier mistake from the Crusaders. And Worsley now will kick two touch, looking to gain the Bears as many metres as they possibly can. Just over 10 minutes remaining for the Bears to find a way back into this game as they come together for a bit of a meeting before trudging, trudging across to this near side. Well, the young fly half there, Sam Worsley, putting us right into the corner. And as we saw in the first half, if Bristol get a good set here, there is definitely opportunity to go over Fred Davis, potentially for his second. But that's a great start from Crusaders. Marmion, well collected. No Vakatawa. Can they empty the tank here, the Bears, and find a response? Marmion through the hands again. Ibatoye with very little time to think about the red and black shirt that was in front of him. Marmion goes off again, spots a gap, almost finds its way through as Ibatoye picks off the back of that. Ruck running out of space down there as Dan Thomas is acting scrum half. Fitz Harding takes it on, presents the ball back to Marmion. Dan Thomas now, Bears having to be patient. Crusaders resolute defensively. Batley. Is there going to be a nail-biting end to this game as Fitz Harding makes a really good run, but he's just knocked off the park. 
And it will be a Crusaders line out. Our Bears again doing well to exhaust the touch lines to find those extra yards. But in these conditions, getting that close to the edge just opens up the opportunity for the defence to slide you into touch. And as we see here, as Fitzy goes to ground, dry day, momentum might not carry him that far. But on this wet occasion, just slides a little further than he normally would. But Bears now, while we're camped on this line, need to put pressure on. We have to get up in this line out. But they go over with a lovely dart. Fitzharding has made his way off. And Fred Davies as well makes his way off the park. Paddy Pierce is on now. And Thomas William for the Bears. Noananu wipes the ball down ahead of his line out. Bang on the 22 metre line. Another change for the Crusaders. Levi Omua comes on, the 29-year-old born in Auckland. Absolute dream of his to pull on the Crusaders jersey, and now he has his chance. The referee unhappy there with something. Too many players on the pitch for the Crusaders. Just out of sight now as to who hadn't realised they'd been substituted. 10 out of 11 lineouts won in slippery conditions as well for the Crusaders. An impressive return. Moananu secures good ball again. Perfectly collected by Corey Kello, who's been outstanding as they move up over the 22-metre line, or attempt to at least. Leo Willey holding everything together. Loose hands again. Omua with the clearing kick. We will have another line out in this game. It's become a touch stop start as Ibatoye tries to regain a bit of momentum for the Bears. Does Andrew Turner have any secrets that he can share with Gwilliam as he succeeds in his first line-out throw? A beautiful dart. Marmion desperate for quick ball. He's come out, though, in the arms of a Crusaders player. Ryan Coxon chipped over the top into the grateful arms of Gabriel Ibatoye. He can't quite make his way past the first tackler. Tane Robinson called into action now. This time it's dropped by Ben Salomon into the midfield. A chip from Worsley there, doesn't find its intended target. In Vakatawa. It's a penalty though for the Bets. Just over five minutes remaining. We don't want this game to really peter out at this point, Will, because the Bears still in with a, a glimmer of hope. Indeed. I think it's been a tough one for the Bears this second half. Losing Batley was a was a key time for Bristol. And Crusaders made us pay with two quick tries through Jack Gray. But a midfield scrum, six minutes to go. An incredibly tough place to defend. Some exciting backs that can do damage in these sorts of situations for Bristol. It's important now that the scrum's clean with the new front row. Tom Gwillem, Andrew Turner, Johnny Ben Solomon, young players. Let's see how they front up. Marmion with the put in. Not quite what we wanted, Will. Frustrating, really. It's, it's gone down to ground quite quickly. Referee deeming Andrew Turner to having hinged at the hips, but. Quick snap decisions like that when the ball's made it to the back of the scrum. You think you'd be allowed to play it away. But Kimara misses touch. And now Gabs has an opportunity to run at a broken field. And finds good yards off of his initial return. 
So power and acceleration from Ibatoye. Sure, Richie Lane felt uh, that one as he's tackled. Good quick hands though for the Bears, and there's an opening here for Vakatawa. On to Ibatoye. He's got Dan Thomas for company. Needs some extra legs though. The Bears on this near side, crunching collision. The ball is kept in play though. That was a nasty one there. The Bears win the penalty. Jamie Hanna, a judge to have entered illegally there, but it's spilled in the midfield. Eyes off the ball as Batley comes forward now. Fresh out of the bin, of course. Into the 22. Lakatawa tries to clear the Crusaders out of the way as Dan Thomas finds quick hands into Worsley. Ben Salomon clearing up. This is better from the Bears. A bit of rhythm, tempo to their play as Ibatoya goes flying into the tackle. Marmion looking just to root his way through the middle. Makatawa looking for Revovo. Makes his way past one tackler, then he's sort of scragged backwards again. That was a nasty collision. Referee points to his chest, but doesn't see anything illegal there as it's back through the hands once more. Worsley, good line on the pass, but Lane is tackled very, very quickly by Jack Gray. Quick hands from the Crusaders, and they could close off this game here with Jamie Hanna. They will score right in the corner. And that just about wraps things up for the Crusaders. A superb try. Noah Hotham with the five points for the Crusaders. That was outstanding work on transition. Moen Anu just picking up the loose ball. The big man with the delicate feet, quick step, offloads, finds his lock. A lovely little offload. And then it's a foot race between the two, the two big men. But Hannah calling for it on the short, knew that he could make that corner. And what a try on transition from Crusaders. They're lethal in these sorts of situations, as we've seen over the last few seasons. And again, making Bristol pay off of the back of what had been a really good set of play for them. Another but chance now for Kamara as well to find some points from the boots. That was the Crusaders we come to expect for that try. Just dragging that one wide. So the score will be 31 points to 14 in favour of the 12-time Super Rugby Pacific champions as they prepare to defend their title and make it 13. Now under the stewardship of Rob Penny, who I'm sure will be delighted, or at least happy with what he's seen in this second half. But Jamie Hanna there using every last fibre of his being to stretch away from the defender, allowing Hotham to touch down. But do the Crusaders want more as we enter the final minute of regulation time? You can see Hotham now marshalling his men. Crusaders looking to close this game out. Forward to forward. Happy with the performance that they put in today. An impressive one in what had started with terrible conditions. But what has turned into an impressive display from the travelling men who have shown exactly what they're about as they look to close this game off and kick it into touch. Well, there you have it. A real spectacle tonight with the Bears facing the Crusaders. We were treated to fireworks before the match and we saw a few fireworks and certainly in the second half, that man with a grin on his face with a cracking try that he finished off. It's been a 
a decent enough encounter. The fans have enjoyed seeing some excellent rugby at times, but the Bears unfortunately go down 14 points to 31 in favour of the Crusaders. And uh, Will, we were treated to the hacker. It was uh, wonderful to have the Crusaders on tour and visiting Ashton Gate. And these are the sorts of fixtures and encounters that put Northern Hemisphere rugby, particularly English rugby, and in the southwest of England on the map too. Oh, it's amazing. I think the advantage of having a, a head coach like Pat Lamb, who is such a well-travelled player in his time and now a well-travelled coach, is teams want to play against the Bristol Bears. And it's amazing that Crusaders, a team of franchise of their calibre, not just as a rugby team, but as an organisation, have identified us as a, a team that not only do they want to play, but they want to travel halfway across the world to play. Says something about what's going on in the Southwest with rugby at the moment. And whilst the weather in the first half might have stifled some of the uh, attacking, flowing rugby we've come to expect from both sides, the second half really opened up. And you saw that on transition, the Crusaders, 12-time Super Rugby champions, are absolutely ruthless and managed to pick off what was a 14-man side for 10 minutes and just pull that lead to a point where Bristol were unable to come back. But what an occasion and what a night for Bristol Bears supporters. And we wish Crusaders the best of luck in their season. And an abundance of young players on show for the Crusaders, but from a Bears perspective, how good to see the likes of Sam Worsley out there tonight. Oh, it's amazing to see all these young players come through. I mean, we spoke about that last scrum, that front row, Andrew Turner, Thomas Gwillem, Johnny Ben Solomon, littered throughout the pack, so many youngsters, it's great to see. Well, Will, it's been brilliant having you alongside us. I know it's going to be a bit of time before you're back on the field, but as ever, fabulous company, great insight, so it's been a joy to have you alongside me. Thank you for having me, Toby. Loved every minute. Thank you, Will. So the final score then at Ashton Gate, the Bears going down 14 points to 31. We'll hand you back to Lisa in the studio. Thanks very much, Toby. Will Cape on there. Still the very jubilant, still an, an exuberant commentator, I think is um, the politest way of phrasing that uh, from you, Shidi. Uh, so the Crusaders are victorious, as you both <coughs> said, as we uh, wrapped up at half time saying that we thought the game was going to spring into life. Well, it certainly did, not for our favour, but for theirs it was. Yeah, it definitely opened up at the end. You could see a few of those passes that weren't quite sticking in the first half started to stick and we get ourselves in really good field position and then just go to work from there. A couple of really opportunistic tries when we just got the break and the bounce of the ball went our way and a couple of speed speedsters opening up down the field. It was pretty exciting to see. Yeah, not from our point of view. <laughs> but, um, I mean, you really pun they really punished us, didn't they? When there was any error that we made, they capitalised on it. Yeah, I think the most impressive thing for me in terms of the Crusader side is their transition attack. Uh, we knew that if we lost the ball we needed to switch on in transition and you know, we probably didn't do that well enough but they, they were really, really clinical um, and it was really impressive and something that we can sort of look to improve on ourselves now in the last six games of the Premiership but it was very impressive second half from the Crusaders there. Yeah, I mean I think we got a, a taste of it from the very start of the second half. They camped out almost on our 22 yard line for about 10 or 15 minutes before the first try. We can see them all applauding each other off. We'll go through those highlights in a, in a moment as we can see all the players lined up there and uh, Tom I think you said you're, you're heading off flying back tomorrow. Yeah, so we've got to make the journey back tomorrow. It's, I think it's about a 40 hour journey which is it's, a, it's pretty <laughs> testing but I think going Interesting for the second row, as I'm yeah. sure. I really hope they're in premium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I'm not the tallest guy out there on the plane, so I can kind of relax <laughs> a little bit more than those guys. A little birdie did tell me that the bigger ones have been uh, have got a little bit of extra leg room, which only seems fair. <laughs> Um, so these guys now all, uh, you can see team spirit, I mean it's so often in pre-season, goodness me, it seemed like the Bears had the longest ever pre-season uh, la this last year. I mean, it's so important, isn't it, going into, you know, the real work is about to start for you guys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're, this has been a great we build up into our competition and I think uh, one way I described it to a couple of teammates earlier, this is real rugby. It's not pre-season rugby where guys are willing to make areas like this is as close to test match as close to real rugby as you're going to get and that's a, such a great prep for us to I guess be in pressure situations and come round one we're going to be so much better off because of it. Yeah yeah well, well let's see let's hear the thoughts uh, from the thoughts from your assistant coach James Marshall he's with uh, Downsy Pitchside. 
James, your thoughts on that battle? Oh, awesome game. Uh, like I said in the preview, like exactly what we were trying to get out of it. Um, a shame about the conditions. I, it looked like Bristol really wanted to play, and um, that's probably sort of hindered them a little bit with the conditions. But um, really proud of the effort from our guys. A lot of young guys really stepped up and um, showed their talent and played played with a lot of confidence, which was awesome to see. In terms of reception and the, the, the style of rugby that Brez brought to you tonight, I mean, there's some superstars at the Bears side too, huh? Yeah, they are, and, and I, I just love their attitude. I think it's such an attractive brand of rugby that they're trying to play, so I'll, I'll be following them really closely, hoping that they have a really successful um, premiership because um, it's, it's good for the game seeing teams play with that freedom and that, that confidence with that willingness to play from everywhere. So. Um, if they're successful, hopefully other teams copy and we have a bit more of an entertaining brand of rugby. And what do you think of the Bristolian fans here? Oh mate, it was incredible, awesome, awesome volume from the crowd, loved the run out with the lights and the fireworks, it was a, a pretty special occasion. And where's next? Back home tomorrow, so um, we've got a long flight ahead of us. Um, and then we've got a pre-season game against the Highlanders next Friday, not too many of these guys will back up, but then following into that uh, the Chiefs round one which is going to be a heck of a start to Super Rugby for us. Thanks so much for paying us a visit, all the best. Mate, love it. Appreciate the um, hospitality here, it's been awesome, thanks. Cheers. Oh, good to hear from him there. Nice, as he says, nice preparation for you guys. You've got one more pre-season game before the season kicks off in, in, in proper form. Uh, let's have a look through some of the highlights from that first half. We've got a bit more to talk through than we did in the first half, which is a bonus, but perhaps not all the Bears ones that I was hoping to talk through. Uh, so it was uh, Springer, wasn't it? It was his second. He kicked off uh, the try uh, first up in uh, just in after 10, 12 minutes of the second half. Yeah, well, I did say he um, was a bit of a finisher and he had quite a bit of work to do there. So it just goes to show he's an amazing young talent who can get across the line from anywhere. But that kick from Shea to see that vision, see the backfield space, I thought Bristol were actually get, got up well and defended the play pretty well. So credit to him as well to see that space and kind of have a bit more of a unique way of getting it there. Yeah, Marshall talked about in that interview there about the youngsters and I guess this is exactly what he's hoping to see. Yeah, 100%. Like they, they stood up and from anyone back at home to those All Blacks sitting there, that's what they want to see because it's going to be better off for our team, those young guys pushing for spots, um, creating really healthy competition and it just it creates a bit of an edge around the environment, which is great. Mm, certainly does. Well, let's uh, talk about the edge of the environment. Let's cross back down to that environment. Pitch side does down to ears with Pat Lamb. Pat, an, an excellent exhibition of rugby here tonight. Yeah, I mean, both teams trying to play, tricky conditions, and, uh, you know, it was uh, neck and neck, and then just little things, you know, we gave penalties away, a couple of turnovers, and, you know, they, they went, but... You know, uh, again, pleased with the effort for the boys, but, you know, little things cost you against a good side. And, uh, um, you know, but, but, you know, it was, it was a good game of rugby. In terms of those conditions, just how does it affect, for those listening at home, uh, what sort of effect does it have on the game? Well, yeah, you've got to get your timing. It affects timing. Um, but, you know, we, what we said is that, you know, keep coming, keep going at them. But, you know, there was crucial times, I think, just before half time, we give a, a, a penalty for a side. We, we position, we're back in here, we give them a chance to go seven all, and then a lot of you know a lot of their points came off little, just little turnovers. So, but again, you know, boys keep trying, and uh, and I'm pleased for the fans that there was a good game of rugby. What do you think some of our youngsters take away from a game like this? Well, I was just talking to young Sam Worsley and uh, Thomas Quilliam. You know, it's for them it's, uh, it's huge. You know, Paddy Pierce, these boys getting a chance to again just see what their next level's like. And I'll hold them in good stead as they go through. And, you know, some of them are a bit disappointed. As your head's up, just take the learning, look through it, and uh, give you, take whatever you can out of that experience and continue on that development because they've got good futures. And nice for you to catch up with some old friends too. Yeah, definitely. It's been a good week. We know we will catch up. I think we're going to have their, their team will come in and have a few drinks at the change room with the players. It's nice to see the photo. Old school rugby, as me and Rob said. And, um, you know, then they'll all have a good night in Bristol tonight. And when do we return our thoughts to the Premiership? Yeah, we've still got a long way to go. So we've got a couple of weeks now. We'll have a week off again. Most We came back for this game and then we'll have a two-week build-up. We'll play Bedford and then we'll get another couple of weeks build-up. We'll play Saints. So it's still a good six weeks to go. So this is a good hit-up to keep the boys ticking over. Cheers. Thank you.
Right, down to these boys, I'm trying to keep in here, having just heard that there might be a few drinks in the changing room. And like, you're staying here to go through a few more of the highlights. Uh, we'll talk about what the coaches were saying. Let's get, let's pick back up with, uh, uh, well, Bears were back on the over the whitewash um, as we watched uh, us equalise. I think pulled it back with Kieran and Mami and uh, with a try here, if we can see that now. I mean, that was just what we needed. I thought we were going to get back into the game again. Yeah, this is actually, you know, a big... We'd obviously done 40 men with, with Joe Batley and the Simbin, so this was actually, I thought, a, a big sort of part of the game. Um, Jimmy cuts a great line here, and then, you know, Marmo, I think his, tr his try record, I think he's averaging a try every single appearance. You know, he comes off the bench, he had, some, he had so much energy. Um, so that support line there was brilliant. Um, and like I said, here, 14 all, as a Bristol fan, you're thinking, right, we're, we're right back in the game. Um, and so we just had to sort of back up and score next, and unfortunately, we didn't manage to do that. Yeah. I mean, looking at the rebound, I mean, both coaches talked about um, the conditions and the slippery things, but it did feel like we were getting back into it. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, that's something um, we sort of work on. It's sort of even when it's not going perfectly, just sticking in there, sticking in there um, and sort of not letting sides get a score ahead, two scores ahead, especially when you're down to 14 men. Um, so there, like I said, scoring there, I thought was a real cu crucial part of the game. Um, and I bet the boys in, on the halfway line, they were saying, right, we've got to score next, we've got to score next. Um, and like I said, uh, Crusaders were very good and, and didn't let us. Yeah, should we just finish it there then? Not show yeah, the rest stop. Of them? Unfortunately, we can't because we're going to go back down to pitch side because Downsy <laughs> has now got Quinton Strange with him. Sir, what, what, what do you make of that exhibition? Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was plenty of rugby played, I thought. Um, conditions were, were pretty testing. And, but I thought, you know, you know, both teams turned up here and, and wanted to play uh, an exciting brand of rugby. And, um, you know, hopefully it was, it, was, it was just nice to watch somewhat, yeah. As far as that brand of rugby is concerned, uh, Northern Hemisphere versus Southern Hemisphere, what major differences have you seen? Well, look, honestly, um, I think weather dictates a lot. And um, in the winter, you know, back home, it's pretty similar, wet, wet game. So being able to control territory moments, um, your kicking game is really important. And um, I think, as, as you would have seen, you know, box kicks become a weapon if you can land them on the money. So there's not heaps of difference, but it's just knowing when to use what style of game. And as far as the rest of the, the tours, because you're done here now, you've had a couple of pre-seasons, you're heading home and a season ahead of you. How useful are games like this? Yeah, um, extremely useful. You know, we've, we've been able to bring a somewhat young squad here, get game time, learn, you know, get better. I think uh, we've made some good improvements from last week um, and connections off the field as well, you know. It's a great way to build a culture on tour and, yeah, I feel like Crusaders do it pretty well. What are you looking forward to when you get home? Oh, jeepers, mate. Uh, <laughs> no offence, but a decent coffee, eh? Yeah. <laughs> good, thanks so much for joining us. Nah, cheers, thanks. Goodness me, a decent coffee. Don't let any Bristolian hear you. <laughs> we're, we're very proud of our coffee shops here. Maybe he hasn't just been to the right ones. So. <laughs> Uh, right, uh, well, we we could finish it there and not talk about the other three ties that come, but it feels like idea. it'd be slightly... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should we just finish? Uh, but I feel we would be doing you a disservice and uh, the viewers that are watching online as well. So let's have a look through uh, those final three more tries there was to come in the second half, all from Crusaders. Uh, I mean, Levi got getting bagging a brace here. Yeah, he's a tough man to stop that close to the... He's a tough man to stop anywhere on the rugby field, to be honest. And, um, yeah, that just goes to show he had two or three guys on him and it's not uncommon to see him carry that many guys over the line. So he's a very powerful runner. And that line-out, quite crucial. I think we'd had one a few minutes earlier, which were Bears had intercepted quite nicely, so probably quite important. Yeah, I think the, the set piece is something that we spend a lot of the week to work on to make sure we get it right, and that's what it creates. If we can create fast ball, get some of their forwards trapped in the corner, and guys like Levi can have... Normally, we'd like to create a one-on-one, -on -one, but for him, it's a bit more of a one-on-three, and he's pretty happy <laughs> to do that as well. Yeah. So. Well, you say concentrate. I think you've lost the stat. I think it was, uh, you've won 10 out of your 11 line-outs, so that work paid off. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's something that the Fords will be happy with. We're always striving for 100, obviously, but sometimes a good line-out defence like Bristol um, came to the park with, that makes it pretty challenging, so we'll be happy. Yeah, I think it was Joe Owen, wasn't it, that intercepted the one before? I think so, yeah, it was over the other side. I did, couldn't quite... You couldn't I don't quite pay too much attention to the line. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that interested in that. <laughs> All right, well, let's look at Levi's second one. Now, obviously, at this point, 14-21, Crusaders were leading, uh, but then this was his second. Yeah, it's a great wee turn over there. I'm not too sure how the ball sped out, but heads up play from Noah. Great um, foot race. Yeah, and then you see Taha and Maka, two amazingly quick guys. And 
to get down the field this quickly and put pressure on this breakdown. I know our outsides put a lot of work on it. It's not a skill that outsides are necessarily renowned for, but that's what creates that try and that's what allows <laughs> Levi to have kind of an easy walk over. And what was the controversy? So, I mean, obviously, from a Bristol point of view, there was a bit of booing going on. You said we weren't quite sure. Yeah, well, looking at it again, I'm obviously going to have a one-eyed <laughs> opinion here. You I'll get Kevin's opinion in a second. <laughs> but obviously, those first two guys do a really good job of getting over that ball and making it available as if Levi was a halfback uh, rather than a midfielder, I don't think anyone would be complaining about him picking that ball up. I think sometimes people get a little bit... A, a little bit scared when they see someone other than a halfback because they do seem to have their own little rule book in the game and they can get away with a lot more. But I th from my point of view, albeit maybe biased, I think that's a <laughs> clean try. It'll be interesting. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I didn't actually know what they were booing about either. No. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they were frustrated the fact that we've gone from 10 metres from the Crusaders line to <laughs> Andra Sticks, which is a killer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't see anything wrong with that. I thought it was a perfectly legal try. Fair um, enough. Yeah. You've heard it here. There's the assessment <laughs> of the experts. So that took you 12 points clear of us. 26-14, you were leading then. Uh, but there was another final flourish, and we talked about Noah Hoth in the, in the uh, build-up to kick off, and great effort. Yeah, I mean, some great forward play here. Jamie Hanna, he's put a lot of weight over the summer, but he's still obviously got a little bit of toe under his belt. <laughs> and then he, when the time's right, he did find a wee bit more of a speedster just to get that last 20 metres or so. And Noah, just like any good halfback, is always going to be there to finish a try, whether it be on the inside or the outside. Those guys just seem to find a way to run the right lines and end up over the paint so he did look pretty happy to pass that ball off it looked like those legs were just starting to die <laughs> Not knowing Jamie I think he would have if there was any chance of him getting over he would have taken it so it, it's a big moment for him to pass that one on and make the unselfish unselfish play yeah yeah well he did make the unselfish <laughs> play and so it concluded uh, the victors 31 to 14 and um, Callum thoughts from that I mean obviously uh, we've heard from the interviews there we've obviously got quite a big break now what happens yeah, so uh, I think we've got another five weeks from now, four or five weeks till the next Prem game. So we have a, a week off next week, um, so we'll recharge. Um, and then we've got a little block of two weeks where we go a training week, training week with Be we go to Bedford um, for, a, for a friendly then on the Friday night. Friendly. <laughs> friendly, yeah, used loosely. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I think we're two weeks away then from returning against Northampton, I believe. So, um, yeah, it's a bit of a weird, t weird time of the season. This is—it's never happened before over here. Um, mm -hmm. Usually, we play right through the Six Nations, so um, it is strange. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite weird to have like a mini pre-season almost in February. So, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. I personally don't like it, but um, I guess but it gives. You sports always about momentum, isn't it? It's yeah, always hard, especially when, you, when you, especially when you go from beating Bath and scoring 50 points to then saying, right, I'm going to Prem game in seven weeks. Mm. It is tough, but we've got to find a way of, of getting the momentum back. We've got six massive premiership games where we really want to go for the top four. So um, tonight would be massive for us to take some learnings from that game, take, take a few bits while the Crusaders did so well, like I said, in their transition, I thought were well, fantastic. Um, and hopefully really push on the last six games and, and make a push that top four. Yeah, fingers crossed for that top fingers four. Crossed. It's all still to play for. And uh, Tommy, you said obviously you guys fly back then tomorrow night, the joy of that long haul flight. Yeah. It's and a bit of downtime? Uh, before not, the next pre-season? Not too much really, we'll be straight off the plane, um, there'll be a good group at home including a lot of the All Blacks who will be ready to take on the Highlanders and potentially a sprinkle of the guys that have been away on tour but I'd, I'd say most of them it would be quite a big ask to get back out there. So, But we'll be back into training, I don't think there'll be too much relaxing before round one, we know that's going to be a massive occasion and the Chiefs are just going to be sitting there waiting for us. So, I'm excited for it and I'm sure the fans will be really excited for it as well. Yeah. A, a word on the fans, I noticed there was a few Crusader shirts in the crowds and fantastic touring support. Yeah, I mean, we've, it's been amazing how many have turned out both in Ireland and over here. Everywhere you go there's Crusaders flags, there's jerseys. I went around after the game last week and it was amazing how many people wanted photos with Crusaders jerseys on so it'll be no different out there I'm sure and the crowd support was, yeah next level. Yeah, well, uh, I'm glad you've enjoyed your stay over here. It's been great having you. Thank you for coming into the studio and sitting with us. I will let you both get off to the dressing room. You can enjoy a drink or two <laughs> potentially at your coach's dispensation, obviously. But thanks for joining us. Best of luck for the rest of uh, your season and best of luck for the start of your coming season. I hope it goes really well and safe travels back to Christchurch.
Uh, right, well, that is it from us here in the studio. We do hope you've enjoyed all of the action with us. As uh, Callum referenced, we are back here at Ashton Gate when we take on Northampton when the Premiership duty resumes. That is Friday, the 22nd of March, and you can purchase your tickets online. Tickets available to buy from now. But yes, a little bit of a wait to come, but enjoy some of the Six Nations perhaps in between. That is it from us, all of us here. I do hope you've enjoyed the coverage and have a good night.